and you're watching Capital One Bowl Mania. LA's Football Palace, SoFi Stadium, and for the first time, college football will be played here with a matchup featuring the Pac-12's leading rusher, Oregon State's B.J. Baylor, out to carry his team to the next level. Hey, it's been a turnaround season for head coach Jonathan Smith. The Beavs are bowling for the first time since 2013. And now comes the challenge, the Mountain West champs. Welcome to the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl, presented by Stiefel. It is a bowl game named after Jimmy Kimmel, but a matchup that is not a joke. Although seeing Kimmel already with the clarinet in hand and joining in the band is the start of a lot of entertainment and laughs tonight, folks. Oregon State, they proved themselves this season. Utah State went 10-3. and Both teams feeling like a win here will launch their programs even further ahead. Blake Anderson and the Utah State Aggies. Anderson, the only first year head coach this season with 10 wins, and here come the Aggies. Two weeks ago, they beat number 19 San Diego State to win the conference championship. Good evening, everybody. Thrilled you're with us. Joe Tessitore with my partner, Greg McElroy. We'll say hello to Laura Rutledge in just a moment. Jimmy Kimmel <laughs> LA Bowl. A new bowl is born here this time of the year. It's got a primetime slot on ABC. It's got a magnificent stadium here at SoFi. And it's Pac-12 Mountain West with two teams that are highly motivated, Greg. Yeah, and you say all the time the narrative, well, bowl games don't matter, nobody cares, it's an exhibition. These two teams didn't get the memo right. because right now when you look at both Oregon State and Utah State, bowl games have not been a foregone conclusion when they start each and every season. Both teams started playing in the early 1890s for Oregon State, just their 18th bowl appearance, and for Utah State, just their 15th. So two teams that are proud to be here, excited to showcase their programs, and trying to end what's been very promising seasons on a really high note. Let's bring Laura into the conversation. Laura, Utah State has one of the best players in the country at wide receiver. Devin Tompkins, Des, the national leader in receiving yards, and he almost left Utah State, actually entered the transfer portal before Blake Anderson, the head coach, was able to come in. And Blake Anderson said that Devin staying is really the turnaround that was necessary to propel them to one of the greatest stories in all of college football. What they've accomplished this year couldn't have happened if Tompkins didn't set the standard. Tompkins likes the matchup today, guys. He says Oregon State plays a lot of man that favors Utah State in their opinion. Or a matchup we're going to be looking at. Here comes Oregon State. Remember, this team beat Utah, the Pac-12 champs playing in the Rose Bowl. They're at their best when they control with a nasty running attack. We got kickoff when we return to the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. What a setting to continue bowl season this evening. First bowl game with a living person as the title sponsor. Year four for Jonathan, Jonathan Smith at Oregon State. Feels like they've got things headed in the right direction. Blake Anderson, what a turnaround for Utah State, his first season here after all the success he had at Arkansas State. Utah State won the toss. They elect to defer. Elliot Nimrod will be kicking off. For the first Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. Jimmy Kimmel will be joining us up in the booth in the second half tonight. Irish back deep to return for the Beavers. First college game at SoFi is underway. And this is Irish on the return as he makes it out to the 28-yard line. Chance Nolan, the quarterback for Oregon State War. 
contest. He says his competitive fire comes from his brothers. They're all four years apart, and Chance is in the middle. The oldest is Chad. The youngest is Cade. And every day when they were younger, they played basketball in the driveway. They'd play till 50 and then take a halftime break, get a snack inside, play 50 more to 100. Always ended in a fight. And parents, huh. Sherry and Mark, guys, would always defend the younger kid. He said that's why he wants to compete so hard, even still today on this field. Chad went on to be a college wide receiver himself. E.J. Baylor in the backfield. He has been the workhorse. He gets the first carry here and makes the most of it, moving the chains immediately for a first down. Tackled by Anyangu. And when you watch this Oregon State offense, what really jumps out, Nolan does a great job off play action. You have a very powerful running attack with B.J. Baylor, but it's the offensive line that is the star of the show. Those guys have really gotten after it. And they are finalists for the Joe Moore Award, which goes annually to the best offensive line in college football. Now, one of the guys they'll be dealing with up front on the defensive line with Utah State is Marcus Moore, and the medical staff out to see him. He's transferred from UCLA, was honorable mention all conference. You think about this Oregon State program and where they've been. It has been a long time since we have seen them at this level. 2013 was their last bowl appearance, the Hawaii Bowl champs. And then you know, some coaching turmoil, four different head coaches to this point, seven losing seasons. But they turn to their old quarterback and Jonathan Smith, who this year in year four gets them to seven wins and 6-0 at home with big wins against Utah and Arizona State. Had a nice visit with Jonathan just before kickoff. Yeah, I really respect him as a coach. Just does a great job of molding his offense and molding the team's identity to what the team does well. He's done a great job in Corvallis. Nolan, first pass attempt of the night. Downfield and in stride, Beeson. Zariah Beeson, very talented. Coaches love his upside, and he goes for 39 yards there. And this Utah State team's going to challenge these wide receivers at the line of scrimmage. They're the question mark for Oregon State's offense. They don't often take to the air, especially there in early down and distance, but right there, just a perfect throw over the top. Talk to Jonathan Smith. He's wanting to make sure that this team does a better job tonight hitting on those big play opportunities. They go with the jet action to Irish, and Irish breaks free and is into the end zone. Three plays and a touchdown. What a start for the Beavers. 20-yard run, Josiah Irish. Just a perfect start for the Beavers. They hit it up inside. Really nice first down run by B.J. Baylor. They throw it over the top, and then they get this Utah State team running horizontally on the jet sweep. Just a beautiful start and perfect execution for the offense. Hayes adds the extra point. I mean, can you be more efficient and more effective than that? 71 yards in three plays, and Irish strides it in. Seven zip early on here in L.A. USAA is made for the safe pilots, like Matt, who can come to a stop with barely a bobble. With USAA Safe Pilot, when you drive safe, you can save up to 30% on your auto insurance. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. Get a quote today. Hey, let's listen to the Buckeyes game. Inside, 10, no, five. I'm driving. I decide. I would also like to hear the Buckeyes game. Sorry. Two Heismans, two votes. Your head coach was one of your best players ever in program history, right? We'll take you back to the 2001 Fiesta Bowl. Jonathan Smith was the offensive MVP. Went for over 300 yards against Notre Dame. Three touchdowns. That was a 41-9 beatdown. Uh, TJ Hushman Zada receiver. Chad Johnson at receiver. And there he is now, head coach at 42 years old. Pretty impressive showing there. <laughs> it's funny because he's kind of unassuming. You see him, it's like, oh, man, that guy played big-time college football. Not the biggest guy in the world. But obviously did a great job in his time there at Corvallis. Oh. 
Savon Scarver, NCAA all-time career record, seven kickoff return touchdowns. Here he goes on the return. Oh, and he is met hard. Good coverage downfield as he stopped at the 20-yard line. Logan Bonner, quarterback. I built myself a girlfriend out of Legos. Then she dumped me. That is how many of the players were able to spend their week introducing themselves. Old school Bob Hope style on the Kimmel Show. Yeah, you gotta love that. I think his game very serious though. And Bonner does a really good job managing this offense, getting the ball out of his hands. He's not afraid to push it downfield. My goodness, they take shot after shot after shot throughout the course of the game. And he has an excellent wide receiver core led by the aforementioned Tompkins, who's just electric with the ball in his hands. 36 passing touchdowns. That is a single season school record. Logan Bonner. Bonner gets it out quickly. And first completion goes to Brandon Bowling. He had nine touchdown catches this year. When you watch this offense, they're going to run with a lot of pace, a lot of tempo, and they're going to spread the field horizontally. Kind of come from that Baylor tree, the Art Bryles tree, where you really want to put the defense in conflict by forcing them to choose either the run or the pass. 19 yards on the reception by Bowling. Connor wasting no time, gets it out again, and diving back at midfield is Devin Tompkins. Laura told you all about him, nearly 1,600 receiving yards. That's his 97th catch of this season. Yeah, he's the best player on the field tonight. I mean, B.J. Baylor, the running back for Oregon State, is outstanding. A lot of really good players, but Tompkins is the best. Has an extremely bright future. And keep it on the ground with Tyler. Tyler's met at the line of scrimmage. He was at Oregon State for four years, now in a bowl game playing against his former teammates, Jaden Grant with the tackle. He doesn't get a ton of opportunities. This passing attack, for the most part, is the star. When Tyler does have a chance to get in the open field, he's got good speed. Pretty decisive runner north and south. Probably Third down and a long one. Probably four down territory here, too. Even on this side of the 50, Utah State never afraid to go for it. Bonner is going to have the first down as he completes it past midfield, and he was able to go to Derek Wright. Derek Wright with 11 touchdown catches this season. That was second best in school history. He's been very productive. A lot of weapons that you have to account for. Of course, the star, the go-to guy is Tompkins, but Wright is a handful. He'll get plenty of opportunities. Bowling will get a ton of looks. And then they have the six foot six McGriff as well. Tyler, not much testing. That right side, Kyrie Fisher with the tackle. Avery Roberts, their best defensive player, first team all conference. He had surgery two weeks ago, so he's out. Fisher starts in his place at inside linebacker. Yeah, I hate that you miss a guy that's just been so productive for you, but they're very excited about Fisher and Mascarenas, who will also fill in that void. It'll have to be void by committee because I'm not sure anyone could replace one guy's production by themselves. Bonner is going to float it down the near side, but that is past the intended target, which was Calvin Tyler coming out of the backfield. Bounders first in completion. And now a third down and nine. With time, and it's incomplete. Tompkins was well covered in the middle of the field. A little unfortunate there for Utah State's offense. Tompkins is working across the middle of the field was about to come free, kind of got a little bit tripped up there as the middle linebacker was dropping into him. You see right over the middle of the field, just kind of gets tripped up. If he doesn't get slowed down, he's running through that window and probably catching it in stride for the conversion. Just unfortunate there as he got tripped up by the dropping defender. Stephen Cotson Lee on a punt. Radford put his heels at about the 10-yard line. Team 
Number 63, five yard penalty, fourth down. Just giving a little bit of room, hoping yeah. for the pin putt here. Yeah, never, just had a bad yardage right there. Just had to take five. Sort of like your seven iron, right? Huh. Seven iron, if I have my seven iron 50 yards, I'm quitting golf. Who knows, right now it's December. I haven't swung a club in a minute. Probably good shot for me. Spins the knuckler. I'll take a great bounce, but look at this thing. That is inside the five for Utah State. Beavers offense. Be back out there when we come back. Already up seven zip here at SoFi. I like to get up to 30% off my auto insurance with Safe Pilot. Mr. Gronkowski, USAA is for the military community and their families. That's what makes us special. Oh, but I'm special. USAA, only for the military community. My new Frontier. I ordered it with Nissan at home. Don't forget water for the road. How does he make catches like that? In my day, we used stick'em. The Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl on ABC is presented by Stiefel, investing in your success since 1890. Greg, there's been great energy all week for the Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl. Saw so some of the scenes from the pep rally. Both teams were able to go to Kimmel's show throughout the week. And fans love the trip here to experience SoFi Stadium, just magnificent, magnificent stadium. Home to the Super Bowl coming up in two months and then college football playoff national championship game next year as Bradford fights for that reception and a flag comes in at the end of that play. Are they going to get him for a late hit? He's kind of slammed him down there at the end of the play. The flag came around that time. Here's Cam Lampkin, the cornerback for Utah State. After the play was over, personal foul, great hit number six on the defense. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run, includes an automatic first down. Not what Utah State defensive coordinator Efren Bonda wanted to see. He just talked with his defense, especially his secondary guys, after giving up a couple of big plays on that first drive and said, slow down a little bit, guys. Figure out what formation they're in. Figure out what they're doing. We've worked on this. Then scooch up and be smart out there. And sometimes in the bowl season, you're just so ramped up. It's been so long since you played that you sometimes over pursue. Nolan with time and incomplete. You know, Laura brings up Ephraim Bonda, we had a very nice visit with him yesterday, and Utah State is the only coaching staff in the nation with minorities in its three key leadership positions. Again, Anthony Tucker is the OC, Bonda is the DC, and Paul Jackson gets a lot of credit for the turnaround. He's the strength and conditioning coach. There was a lot of turmoil in this program last year. There was a player's boycott the final game. The program almost felt rudderless, but Blake Anderson brought in this staff, and it's a group that listens to the players and deserves a lot of credit for doing so. Trey Lowe on the carry on second and 10 and still leg driving for eight harder yards. And yeah, it's reflective in their play. I mean, you can watch this team, this Utah State team, see the intensity with which they play, the leadership that they have on both sides of the ball. It feels player led. When you watch them from afar, you get that sense. It's a certain level of accountability. That's why they've been able to climb out of difficult holes throughout the course of the season. Several du double digit comebacks. Just been a fun team to follow from start to finish. Jack Coletto, the hammer, is now playing quarterback with a direct snap as the flag came in from this Big Ten pool. Full start. Offense, number 84. Five yard penalty, third down. That's Quatoriano, the tight end, as Coletto. Runs off the field, Chance Nolan comes back on, but Coletto is an interesting guy, plays both linebacker and will play in the offensive backfield. A former quarterback who has eight rushing touchdowns, but now primarily a linebacker for the defense. And anytime he comes in, <laughs> be ready. You know it's gonna be a physical snap. 
Third and seven. Pressure off the edge. Nolan puts a lot of air underneath it, but it's incomplete as Gould was the intended target and he was covered by Andre Grayson. Just excellent coverage here by Grayson. They motion down to the bunch. They stay with it. Man-to-man -man coverage, lock into the stack. Ball slightly underthrown and inside. Just not enough contact to potentially draw a pass interference, but it was well defended there by Grayson. Just got to get his head around, might be able to make the interception. Jordan Nathan is back deep for the Luke Losher. The lefty punters kick away, and he knuckles this, and the fair catch at about the 26-yard line. Hey, Monday, it's the Myrtle Beach Bowl presented by Tax Act. Old Dominion take it on Tulsa. That's 2.30 on ESPN. ODU team, man, they've, they've come on for sure. And Tulsa, very physical football team out of the American. Well, they gave Cincinnati fits. They did. How about this shot? L.A., my hometown, Tess. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful place. Are we throwing darts at the map now and claiming I'm, or is this your I'm just wearing my, yes, yes. It's a very convenient hey, to Dallas, say that this is, yes, We got no. Birmingham. No, claim Can it all. Pin one down, please. I went to your away. house once in Connecticut. That's right. Also my hometown. <laughs> Tyler, the carry off the left side as he gets it to the 31-yard line. Tackle from Sandberg. Second and six. Bonner pumps right, then comes back to it, and then spinning is right and going down the sideline for a Utah State first down. Nice work from Derek Wright. This took a half second. A little double clutch from Bonner. Didn't he like it initially? Just in time. By Wright on the quick turn up the sideline. Tyler able to wingle free against his former teammates as he's out to the 46-yard line. Three-yard carry there. Tyler's dealt with a lot of injuries, tore his ACL his sophomore year when he was playing at Oregon State. And this season, Greg, he broke his hand, missed two games. He's a tough runner, though. Bonner on second and seven as he's got terror. And the big tight end past midfield, a first down inside the 40-yard line. He goes for 14 yards. And you watch all these offensive linemen working this way. He just sneaks right out the backside. Piece of cake. Look at the flow defensively. Everyone just takes a half step, jumps leverage. Easy completion there for Bonner. Bonner, pressure right in his face, and he survives it. Escapes two would-be tacklers. Big, thick quarterback who plays very physical. James Rawls was the first guy to burst into that backfield, but was unable to get Bonner. Yeah, that was a heck of a job, too, because you have a guy like Rawls, 300 pounds, trying to drag you down, and then you have a second guy on the outside. That looked like it was Lolo Hea almost brought him down as well. You can see Bonner, 230 pounds. Not the tallest guy in the world, but very sturdily built. He's just strong and can really run with the ball in his hands. I may take action on the over 230, though. <laughs> Might take the under at 6-1, too. <laughs> trying to get it back to Derek Wright. Goes incomplete. I, what I love about Bonner, though, he reminds me a lot of Chase Daniel, where maybe just getting off the bus, not the best looking quarterback, not the prototypical length, not the prototypical size, but the guy makes plays, man. And he's always gonna give you a chance. He's a great competitor. Chase Daniel, I played with him in high school, watched him in college, now going on what, year 13 in the league here with the Los Angeles Chargers, and he's had an incredible career. So I consider that really high praise for the Utah State quarterback. Yeah, I think that's gonna bring out the flag as Keontae Shad decided he was going to get after it a little earlier than the other 21 players. If you're going to go, go hard, right? That's right. I mean, if you're going to bring it, bring it all the way. Yeah. Offside. Defense, number 32 with contact. Five-yard penalty. Third down. 
Yeah, I mean, if you're going to jump offside, you make a mistake. Don't play patty cake with the left guard. <laughs> Just throw them. Let's see what happens. Maybe they won't call it. Ooh, it at the end there, though, Bonner kind of favoring his left leg. Wonder if he got a little banged up on that run just a couple downs ago. He's trying to get past a couple big defensive linemen. Makes for a third down and five. Pressure again up the middle, but downfield to the end zone. And what an effort to pick that off. Achille Arnold. Their star player, Devin Tompkins, was the intended target, but Akili Arnold comes up huge with the interception. Anytime you get one of the best receivers in America working against the safety, of course, it's going to be green light. All systems go for the quarterback. But that time, Arnold does a great job high pointing the football. Tompkins didn't think he'd get there. In a perfect world, you'd love to see Tompkins stop his momentum and go vertical, see if he can't out jump the 5'11 Arnold. But how about the catch for the safety? Difficult matchup for him, but he won it and made the most of what was a heck of a play. DJ Baylor. He is torn down, and that was Marcus Moore. Remember, Moore was banged up on the first play of the game. He comes up with the tackle. You know, they, they've got the turnover chainsaw at Oregon State, <laughs> and that is now in the hands of Akili Arnold. No, I love it. I mean, obviously, just in case you're wondering, there is no chain on the chainsaw. It's a very safe chainsaw. If it is a chainsaw, but it looks the part. It's awesome. Very appropriate for Oregon State. They yeah, were on second and nine, and that run fit very well played by AJ Von Pachon. Oh, there it is. There's the. There's the. It says chainsaw yes. on it, but it's chainless. It's the chainless yeah. chainsaw. Just in case you didn't know what that was, it is in fact a chainsaw. A chainless chainsaw. There's Bonner, you were saying, limping a little bit after that last run he had, and then threw the interception. He was looking for Tompkins. Third down and seven. Trey Lowe comes in to play running back. Pressure off the edge. He picks it up. And then across the middle is Bradford. And a good chunk play for a first down for Trevin Bradford, who comes in with over 1,800 career receiving yards. That's top 10 in school history. And this is a nice natural pick here for Oregon State. They're in a bunch formation. They run two receivers vertical to the right, and they just bring Bradford right underneath it. Very easy completion and just a nice design from Brian Lindgren and Jonathan Smith. 20 yards there to Bradford. Nolan, an diving effort from Luke Musgrave. These are the things that Chance Nolan's going to have to continue to develop. Now it's a completion, it's a positive play, but you left a lot of meat on the bone. Mm -hmm. He's drifting to his left, get a little wide with his front foot, and he forces the receiver to make a difficult catch. If that ball is thrown at the face mask where you'd love for it to be, receiver's turning up and you got a lot of yards after catch. And that's a great example when you talk about being open and wide with the front foot of how technique and mechanics affect what the execution is and the result is on the field. That was the case there. Vaughn comes up with the tackle of P.J. Baylor. Byron Vaughn, we were sitting down there pregame. Byron Vaughn's dad, he's sitting there front row. He's just barking at us already. <laughs> he's popping that number 11 jersey. Very proud. That's yeah, awesome, man. I mean, both these fan bases, they were yelling at us on the field and yelling at Laura, and everyone was all fired up to be here. A great scene, great opportunity for these two programs to showcase their talents on one of the biggest stages. Second and eight. Nolan. Oh, and he's taken down hard. Torn down by Nick Henninger, the academic All American with the sack of Chance Nolan. And this is just a thing of beauty right here. The, this defensive end goes high, this defensive end goes low. And that forces the quarterback to step up. See, he feels that presence on the right side. Step up, boom! He's right there for you. Just an excellent job 
by this Utah State defensive front, staying on different levels and dropping the quarterback for a big loss. Put themselves in a third and 14 hole. Trey Lowe motions back in. Nolan, just a three-man rush as he drops it to Lowe. And Lowe trying to weave his way, and he does so inside the 40-yard line. So he shaves some of that off, but it'll be fourth down. Uh, think, Johnny Carter with the tackle. Thing of beauty there, too, because now you get the option to go for it on fourth down if you so choose. Just a great job there behind the sticks. An excellent run after catch by Lowe. 18 yards after the catch. Fourth and three. No hesitation from Jonathan Smith. Eighth play of this Oregon State drive. Fourth and three for the Beavers. Nolan trying to extend the play. Looking for Lowe, but it's denied. That is Hunter Reynolds that denies it. The transfer from Michigan comes up with a big play and a turnover on downs. Big play from Reynolds. Back at beautiful SoFi Stadium, the first ever college football game in this stadium, the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl, and here with the man himself, Jimmy Kimmel. Were you actually playing the clarinet to start this thing off? I was. I wasn't playing it well, but I was playing it. I heard something that was a little off tune, and I figured that was maybe you, but I wanted to make that sure. Was for sure me, yeah. I was in the high school marching band, but I haven't played much since. I heard you had a little trouble getting in this bowl game today. Yeah, I did. The lady at security was like, uh, no, you don't have the right parking pass. I said, um, I'm Jimmy Kimmel of the Jimmy. She didn't care. You know, it was tough for us to get in, too, but I, that makes me feel better that I'm you struggled, too. I'm glad I could, my failure could bring you hope. You know, you are the only living person to ever have a bowl game named after you. How does that make you feel? Exciting. You know, I, it makes sense, really. It's hard to get dead people to flip a <laughs> coin. Uh, is that true? I'm the only living person. Yeah, it, Will Rogers had one named after him, but sadly he had already left us at that point. Oh, my God. You have to tell me now on TV? Yeah, that's the sort of thing you should break to someone in private. Yeah, I hope things go well for you the rest of the night. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. You got anything else planned for us that we should know about? I do. I have. We built the world's most powerful T-shirt cannon. It is an enormous, very, very powerful projectile device, and it's worth sticking around to see. We're going to do that at halftime. All right. Can't wait. I hope you hit Tess and Greg up in the booth. You think you can aim for those guys? I'm aiming for Greg. Okay. Uh, Greg, watch out. <laughs> you Target's on you. Target's on you. Thanks, Jimmy. Look, Laura, you bring up a good point here. Does, he's wearing a credential. Please tell me the credential doesn't actually say Jimmy Kimmel. He needs a credential for his own bowl game? Yeah, yeah, look, it says Jimmy Kimmel. They're saying you need a credential for your own bowl game. I know, it's embarrassing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's because I'm so much more handsome in person. They, that's what they tell me anyway. I didn't recognize you, to be honest, so there you go. Uh, yeah, all access, though, by the way, so he's okay now that he's got us. I, I can go in the ladies' room if I want to. <laughs> We'll, we'll find out if he does that, guys. I'll report oh, back. Oh, boy. Thanks, Jay. There'll be sirens going off if he does that. All points bulletin is Terrell takes it on third and 20. Jimmy's unbelievable. I mean, he's got a sandwich that he created that's being sold at concessions. We're going to have to have him break that down for us when he comes to the booth. He was out there playing the clarinet earlier with the band. And he's got the world's largest T-shirt cannon that he's going to be firing off. Constantly punting away for Utah State. Bradford back to return. And as they put the rat out there, tried to fake the return man to the right side and really had it go into the other side. Greg, how much do you love the bowl season? Oh, there's nothing better. Are you kidding me? We have games every day for the most part up until January 5th. I'm all about football. I like ball. Tuesday, two more great bowl games, Kent State and Wyoming, and then UTSA and San Diego State in the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl. That game right there, fascinating. I don't have to tell Utah State about what San Diego State accomplished this year, but UTSA, they also won their conference. 
very powerful run game against a great run defense. So just an incredible slate on Tuesday as well. Baylor not finding much there. B.J. Baylor over 1,200 yards, who leads the Pac-12 in rushing, taken down by Shaq Bond. He's been a four-year starter for Utah State. Our all conference player does a really good job. This is a defense that is extremely aggressive. I mean, they fly around, they put a lot on their players. Jack Bond's a big reason why they can. These guys are very smart and do a great job being aggressive at the point of attack. Second and 10, Nolan is torn down again. As that was Hale Moto Apuaka. Just a thing of beauty here on the game. You got two guys twisting inside, another guy twisted to the outside, and they drop Chance Nolan. It's not often that you see Oregon State really getting pushed around. This is an excellent group when it comes to run blocking. However, if there is an Achilles heel to one of the best offensive lines in college football, it's their pass pro. Struggling so far against Utah State. Trey Lowe as they play conservative on third and 21, but Motu Apuaka, the two-time World Fire Knife champion. Born and raised in Hawaii, he just lit up Chance Nolan. Seven zip, Oregon State. This is what we're talking about, 2021 World Fire Knife competition. The men's division champion, that's who just had the sack. Jimmy Kimmel Label, presented by Stiefel, returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. I like to get up to 30% off my auto insurance with Safe Pilot. Mr. Gronkowski, USAA is for the military community and their families. That's what makes us special. Oh, but I'm special. USAA, only for the military community. I love sneaking out here. Plush seats, entertainment system, best horsepower I've ever seen. I didn't mean it like that. I'm sorry. So you're with us, Jimmy Kimmel, L.A. Bowl, presented by Stiefel, part of Capital One Bowl Mania. 7-0 Oregon State. Irish had the 20-yard touchdown run. 58 seconds into the game for the Beavers. Luke Losher will be punting away to Jordan Nathan to start this second quarter. Joe Tessitore, Greg McElroy, Laura Rutledge with you here in L.A. Already right, had one great visit with Jimmy Kimmel. He'll be coming up to the booth in the second half. As Nathan will field this at the 35, but he was pinned against the sideline. Took a hard hit as he went out. Greg, you noticed something at the end of the play not long ago with Logan Bonner, the starting quarterback with Utah State. And it was on that run that he had earlier in the game where he made this first guy miss, made the second guy miss, but look as he's getting tackled. He cuts to his right, and then that left leg kind of gets hung right behind, and then watch as he's trying to get up to the ground. Kind of favors it for a half second, but watch here. As he tries to lift up, he kind of favors it some and then begins to limp just a little bit with that left leg looking a little less strong than usual. So it looks like, as of right now, it's Cooper Lega, the backup quarterback sophomore out of Orem, Utah. Who has spent the year as the number three, but during the bowl practices has been the number two as Andrew Peasley has been dealing with an injury. So Lega in at quarterback and wasting no time. And welcome to the game, Cooper Lega. Devin Tompkins takes it all the way. How about that? 62-yard touchdown, Lega off the bench. His first pass ever, and it's this. And how about the throw? I mean, over the top, just a thing of beauty from Lega. First career throw. You can retire now, Cooper Lega, and you'll have the highest passer rating in the history of college football. One for one for a million yards and a touchdown. They had 67 total yards on their first three drives. Then 
Galega comes in, and Tompkins strikes for 62 and a score. Man, oh man. Great stuff here. Utah State ties it up. Cooper Lega. What a moment. I like to get up to 30% off my auto insurance with Safe Pilot. Mr. Gronkowski, USAA is for the military community and their families. That's what makes us special. Oh, but I'm special. USAA, only for the military community. I love sneaking out here. Plush seats, entertainment system. Best horsepower I've ever seen. Boomer! I didn't mean it like that! I'm sorry! Back in, back in L.A. where Utah State has tied it up with Oregon State. And Cooper Lega, what a way to have your first pass ever. It's a magnificent touchdown pass. You see Logan Bonner right there. He went out of the game with what appears to be a left knee injury, was trying to come back in, was in the medical tent. And then when Cooper Lega went out onto the field and was able to throw that touchdown pass, first guy coming running out of the medical tent, limping like crazy, is Logan Bonner. He's been trying to run on the sideline, guys, but keeps shaking his head no about re-entering. Either way, Utah State feels like they're in good hands with Cooper Lega now at quarterback. Are they ever? This is a short kickoff that Irish will be able to return and make his way across the 25-yard line as flags rain in at the end of the play. Maybe a couple penalties here. There were flags flying at different times. This Big Ten officiating crew will clean it up. Jeff Servinsky heads it up. Oh. During the return, holding number 27. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down the 10. Our clutch delivery brought to you by Chipotle. Thing of beauty. Young receivers, watch this route from Tompkins. Look at how he absolutely freezes the defender, Jaden Grant. Look at him work inside. And as you can see, Grant just has to sit there and respect the potential cross face. He goes right over the top. That's how you create incredible separation. And that's why Devin Tompkins, one of the best wide receivers of college football. Morgan Street, jet motion as Gould takes the handoff. And he weaves his way for 10 yards. You know, so Greg, 71 yards and a touchdown on Oregon State's first drive. And then the next three drives, just 51 total yards and no points on the board. And it's been the tackles for loss and sacks. I mean, this is a group that really prides themselves on staying on schedule. When you watch Oregon State, it's almost, gosh, it's rare when they're behind the sticks. But there's been a few opportunities now for Utah State using some of their athleticism and their quickness to be able to create separation up front. And they've dropped Nolan for a couple big losses. DJ Palin, this is really the bread and butter of what Oregon State is. Coming into the day, Oregon State, only 40 plays that were tackles for loss this year. That's second in all of college football. Michigan led college football with just 27, which is a ridiculous number. But Oregon State really prides themselves staying on schedule, and so far, Utah State has been up to the challenge, being able to handle what is a very feisty offensive line and a great run game. Now Jack Coletto, the linebacker who also plays fullback, is now in in the I formation. And Baylor's the tailback on second and four, and Baylor is going to lower the shoulders and will have the first down. Now you bring up the success with the offensive line and how They've limited tackles for loss, and then you see two sacks with Utah State tonight. This whole line that Jim Mahalchek coaches, great. they've only given up 10 on the entire year. They really were proud of how they played in the, in the second half of the game against Oregon, against one of the best pass rushing groups, Kayvon Thibodeau. Mm -hmm. They didn't let them do anything in the second half, really kept Chance Nolan's jersey clean. So, big change here. Play action, and the boot off of it, and Nolan with a strike as he is able to go to his tight end, Tegan Quitoriano. Big 6-6 target, goes for 21 yards. When you talk to Oregon State's offensive coaching staff, they said, man, with the athleticism and the quickness and the aggressiveness 
of Utah State, we're going to have to use some misdirection. That's a great example right there of misdirection. You show outside zone to the left, you boot your quarterback back out to the right, full flow, you have an easy completion. Baylor on first down. Look at that offensive line just finding work downfield, driving ahead as he goes for seven yards. And when these guys latch on, it's a wrap. And it's not just the offensive line. I mean, they're wide receivers and they're tight ends. Tegan Quitoriano, Luke Musgrave, they all take ownership in dominating the line of scrimmage and have done so against good competition throughout most of the year. Second and three. As Roll will have another first down for Oregon State. Now a well-managed drive. As they are six plays into it, 54 yards. Roll goes for six there. It'll be right here. You got it really working on the ground. I'm Brian Lindgren. Here's play action time. Plus 32 yard line, heavy play action. Get those safeties, get those linebackers to come up and attack the line of scrimmage. And then boom, you throw it over their heads for what might be a touchdown. This would be the play action shot down for me. Baylor, as that was well defended that time, Kevin Metzenheimer comes up to make the tackle. Nice job there by Keena Mylai. Linebacker getting around the edge and dropping. Running back there right at the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. Baylor wrapped up. And it was Justin Rice who's been so active this year. 115 tackles in the regular season for Justin Rice. Well, this down and distance, Oregon State had some success earlier with a bunch formation. Let's see if they go back to that bunch formation, three receivers tight to the top, and see if they can't create a natural pick, which they've had success with on third down so far. Here's third and six. Nolan gets it complete right over the middle as he goes to Anthony Gould. Nice job there by Nolan getting it just far enough as the pocket was starting to lose its integrity. Ball's a little low. Would love for it to be just the tiniest bit more accurate because it can lead, like we talked about earlier, two yards left on the field. If you hit that receiver on the face mask, he's still running. He might score. It's that next level accuracy. It's going to be a huge point of emphasis for Chance Nolan throughout this offseason. False start. Offense, number 88. Five yard penalty. First down. It's Musgrave, the other tight end. They're just not built to operate like this. I mean, with how they're running it right now, I mean, they can still get back and convert, keeping this drive alive. But anytime this offense, with the way they try to impose their will at the line of scrimmage, anytime they get behind the sticks, it becomes very difficult for them. And they're obviously not a team that really wants to spend a time, ton of time throwing it on first and 10 situations. First and 15 is trying to set up the screen. But Byron Vaughn, he's been very active in this first half, the defensive end for Utah State. He was able to disrupt that play. Great job by Vaughn. Of course, has great length at six foot four. Attacks the quarterback's throwing arm. You know, I give a little pause and wonder if that was a backwards pass. And it's immediately recovered and it was blown dead, so I'm not sure it would change the outcome, but let's take a peek just to see. I think it was forward. Yep, definitely forward, but a great play nonetheless. And you see the, the ball ends up going backwards. And that's what 
throws you off a bit. Second and ten. Nolan trying to extend the play. Here comes the pressure as the linebackers were able to come up and pursue him. That was A.J. Vong Pachan coming after Chance Nolan. It'll be a third and 15. The last time, I mean, every time you get similar down and distance, the last time we saw Oregon State in third and long, what they do, they ran a screen, and they got it to fourth and manageable. They ended up gaining 13, 14 yards on that screen to Trey Lowe. So you got to keep your antenna up if you're Utah State. No that if you're rushing the quarterback and it looks too easy, it probably is. Mm -hmm. Don't take the bait, be disciplined, and make sure you tackle in the open field. See how they approach it here, third and 15. Nolan being chased all the way back, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Musgrave, he was trying to get it to anybody. As once again, generating a good pass rush is Ephraim Bundas. Utah State defense. That's a great job by Utah State, but Justin Rice and company, they were benefited there by a pre-snap penalty that really disrupted the rhythm of what was a very promising drive from Oregon State. So far, they've been their own worst enemy at times on first and second down. 42-yard attempt from Everett Hayes. Flag comes down as Hayes didn't make good contact, got poor rotation. And it was off to the left, but we will check on the flag. Hayes, who has hit a 60-yarder this year, also had a game winner against Washington. He struggled a bit on the mid-range field goals. Based on the reaction to some of the Utah State players, it's not going to be Illegal news. formation, defense number 95, lined up over the snapper. Five-yard penalty, replay. Down. That's a point of emphasis for safety of not having a defensive player over the snapper on kick and punt. And that's obviously with the miss, and who knows? I mean, he might have might have missed it anyways. Maybe the whistles threw him off, what have you. But it obviously gives you a second chance when you give your opponent life. It's a big mistake from Utah State. Shortens it to a 37-yarder for Hayes. Much better struck. And with that, it's 10-7 Oregon State. Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl, where they have their own mascot. And Laura found out all about it. Jimmy Camel. <laughs> Jimmy Camel's the mascot. More on that when we come back. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, the inaugural Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl mascot race. On your mark, get set. Jimmy Camel, what a great job. What an upset win. How do you feel? Ah! Oh. All right. Uh, smells like pizza. Back to you. No, 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 no. Jimmy Camel. I mean, that is how they introduce And now he's trying to chase Laura after vomiting into the water outside of SoFi. You know, when they introduced Jimmy Camel on the show, he actually vomited all over Jimmy's set. Oh, Hollywood. really? That's how they introduced him. And now he's doing it again here at the bowl game. Scarver's going to take it out of the end zone. Trying to find a seam and finds nothing. He's taken down at the 15-yard line. You really haven't lived until you've called a bowl game with an eight and a half foot tall, 250 pound costume camel barfing next to your sideline reporter. Yeah. I do feel like Jimmy Camel hasn't necessarily taken advantage of, you know, some of the great food that you have here in the Los Angeles area, just not respecting his body. That's that leads to regurgitation, <laughs> which is never a good thing when you're trying to do calisthenics. Well, a great job not gagging there for a moment. Uh, you know, Tess, you guys know me really well. Mm -hmm. um, these types of regurgitation <laughs> situations are actually my worst nightmare. I'm still not okay. <laughs> Two years into motherhood and you're still dealing with it. Uh, by the way, let's show you the first attempt of what happened 
between oh wow <laughs> big blue penny beaver <laughs> wow the eight wow tall okay costume camel jimmy camel that's a total wipeout laura total wipeout yeah the camel said that uh jimmy camel said his humps helped him out there <laughs> there's just so many things i'm thinking right now better meanwhile calvin <laughs> tyler <laughs> Oh my goodness! He ran 15 yards and threw up. It's got to take. I know it's. I know it's bulk season, but I mean, come on, man. We got to lean it up. Tyler on the carry. The third down after he was stopped for a loss. There's Benny Beaver, who was involved in that race outside SoFi. You know, they didn't, they took the assignment seriously in terms of finding a bowl game mascot. They put Dave Raymond to work. He's the national mascot consultant who designs many of the mascots you see in college and pro sports. So they did reject some. Greg, it's third down and two. Lego. And try to run it himself, and he's going to get the first down. So they're there on the show. They, you know, Jimmy brings Dave Raymond in, and Jimmy said, "I'm really looking for a mascot that mostly brings joy to children, but can strike fear into the enemies. That's probably where the barfing comes in." But they had a rejected mascot idea of Smoggy the LA Smog, mm. Mangy the LA Coyote, and they go with Jimmy Camel. Olega comes back to Devin Tompkins. They hooked up for the 62-yard touchdown not long ago. Wright was there defensively. I mean, I'm, I think of all the things that are associated with L.A., mm -hmm. traffic, and beautiful sunsets, and the beach, and Campbell's not one of them. You know, it's just, just not one of the ones that comes to mind, but I love it. Love it. Second and six. With Olega, going to give to Tyler. And Tyler is brought down immediately that time by Sandberg. Here's what happened on the Kimmel Show. I was thinking things about L.A. because they're like smog in there. Then we have, this is an animal we see commonly around here. Yeah. This would be Jimmy Camel. This would be a camel. I like this. And that's who we have here. A camel walking around with a man's beard, a collar, a silk tie. Third and four. Flag reigns in as Brandon Bowling was the intended target for Cooper Lega. Big penalty there. Throw off the mark, but he rewarded because of the contact in the secondary. Pass interference. Defense number 28. 15-yard penalty results in automatic first down. Olacapo is flat. He was honorable mention. All Pac-12 this season. Yeah, nothing he could really do. I mean, the ball's thrown behind the intended receiver. He tries to go vertical for it. Oladapo is just keeping his momentum going. As you can see, Bonner now going into the locker room. No limp there, but it does appear, based on what Laura reported earlier, it does appear like his night has potentially come to an end. Starting quarterback who set the single season school record with passing touchdowns this year. So Cooper Lega, who was number three all year long, elevated to the backup with Andrew Peasley injured this bowl practice season. And Lega came right in with a 62 yard touchdown pass to Tompkins. Sprint right for Lega. And incomplete as you know, he was trying to get it to Bowling on the sideline. Just great coverage there by Oregon State there in the secondary. They've been moving the pocket some to try to take some of the pressure off, try to simplify some of the reads for Cooper Lega. Cut the field in half. When you move the quarterback, you cut the field in half. That time they tried to go with a double move to Tompkins, but it was extremely well covered by the Beavers. Tyler, well blocked, and a first down for the Aggies. 
So here's Utah State with Cooper Lega at quarterback, who redshirted in 2019, and then last year didn't appear in any games, and now he's moving this team. Yeah, just bad lane integrity. You have two defenders there on the inside of that left tackle. There's no one to the outside. No one has contained. Just an excellent job by Tyler taking advantage of it. And that is complete to the 15-yard line to Brandon Bowling. Zalega, who won six state championships in his high school career, two in football, two in track and field, threw the javelin, Greg, and two in wrestling. Six state championships across three different sports. Yeah, an impressive guy so far, man, has stepped into a difficult spot against a worthy opponent. Has been throwing strikes. The offense hasn't really missed a beat. Tenth play of this drive to the end zone. He goes incomplete. Derek Wright couldn't complete it through the process as it was broken up at the very last second by Oladapo. Man, and that's one that Wright would love to have back. The senior, you get an opportunity to help out your backup quarterback. He throws it between two defenders. He almost brings it in. It's a great effort and a good defensive play, too. There by Arnold, breaking it up. Oladapo and Arnold converging there defensively. Tyler again, and right in. Slithering his way for 15 yards through that Oregon State defense, and a touchdown for the Aggies. How about it? The former Oregon State Beaver making guys miss a little shimmy there at the second level. And he finds Pater as he look into his old teammate's sideline, talking a little smack across the field. He had two touchdowns in his career wearing the black and orange. Flag is down on the extra point attempt. Running into the kicker. <laughs> Defense number one, the penalties declined, the result of the try was good. Timeout on the field. Calvin Tyler, four years at Oregon State, limited action there, but turning into a very productive player for Utah State, a touchdown against his former teammates, 14-10 Aggies. Look at that masterpiece of SoFi Stadium. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, making the plays that move you forward. Goodyear, more driven. Greg, we've been blessed to call games at some of the most dominant, monstrous stadiums in all of football. This place is special now. This is the coolest place I've ever been. I mean, this place is real special now. It's it's amazing, amazing. I mean, it's not often when you, I mean, we go to stadiums every Saturday. I mean, it's, you see a lot of great spots. This place is on another level of impressive. I mean, it makes the Great Western Forum look like a matchbox. It's crazy. Irish on the return. Remember, he had a touchdown run to start the game. Tried to hit his stride, but lost it at the 25-yard line. College football playoff semifinals. They're coming your way on Friday, December 31st on ESPN. The Heisman winner will get the day started. Bryce Young in number one, Alabama against number four, Cincinnati. That's a good year, Cotton Bowl Classic. And then it is Michigan and Georgia in the Capital One Orange Bowl. As you can see, one team with an awful lot of playoff experience and three that have been there for the first time. Two of the three have been there for the first time. So very, very exciting playoff group. Chance Nolan is going to run it on first down, and he's going to do so for 11 yards and move the chains. Justin Rice came up with the tackle at the end of that. You know, it's interesting, Cincinnati, we just had them in a championship win a couple weeks ago. Their front-line talent is elite. No, it there is. There are top SEC programs contending for national titles that would trade anything to have those cornerbacks. Sauce Gardner. Hasn't given up a touchdown pass in his since he, a touchdown catch in his since he career. Elite cornerback they have. They are legit. In a one-game season, they can beat anybody. No doubt about it. 
E.J. Paler, he is tackled for a loss. That is an active front. Flag comes in late as Metzenheimer makes the tackle of Baylor. I think they're going to get Vaughn's on a late hit here, potentially. Vaughn's has had a revving engine all night long, hasn't he? Transfer from Texas, who plays defensive end. After the play was over, personal fall, late hit defense, number 11. 15 yard penalty be added to the end of the run, includes an automatic first down. Barnes is coming off a stellar performance against 19th ranked San Diego State. Greg was the defensive MVP of the Mountain West Championship game. And, and this is not egregious, it's the correct call. But he's just trying to play. I mean, he's obviously trying to make a play. It's late, can't do it. You got to call him down. He's just flying to the football, playing with great effort, but you cannot do that because you give a free 15 yards when your defense has been playing really well. As you can see, he's very frustrated with himself. Nolan sacked again, and it's Henniger with his second. An offensive line that came in only giving up 10 sacks has given up three in this first half. And this is just an unbelievable rush beating Quatoriano. Bad set there by Quatoriano. You got to attack him. I mean, he kind of just plays it passive. Next thing you know, Henniger just goes right around him, and another first down negative play for the Beavers. Second and 17, as Lowe probes the middle of that defensive line, gets it back to midfield. This offensive line has been the thing that they have leaned on all season. And timeout is used by Utah State. And we'll take the break with them. Utah State up 14-10 here at SoFi. I like to get up to 30% off my auto insurance with SafePilot. Mr. Gronkowski, USAA is for the military community and their families. That's what makes us special. Oh, but I'm special. USAA, only for the military community. My new Frontier. I ordered it with Nissan at home. Don't forget water for the road. How does he make catches like that? In my day, we use stick'em. Fourteen to ten, Utah State. Tyler had the touchdown that put them out in front here in the second quarter. Now Oregon State at midfield, facing a third and eleven. Nolan looking for the screen, but pre-snap. Look at the whistles blowing with the flags coming in. All start. Offense, number 68. Five-yard penalty. They're down. That was an anxious right tackle on Brandon Kipper. You can see this Oregon State offensive line a little flustered, man. And not used to seeing this kind of pressure put on Chance Nolan. But it's testament to the athleticism that Utah State has used throughout most of the first 30 minutes with games and stunts and movement. And this big, powerful offensive line has had a difficult time staying lashed on. Third and 16. Go right back to it. And this is Bolden. And a good tackle on Bolden by Shaq Bond. There's seven yards there. Punt team will come on. I'm surprised right here that Utah State's not calling a timeout, especially knowing that, of course, with a backup quarterback, potentially backed up, you already have the lead. Maybe Blake Anderson's thinking, play this a little bit more conservative down the stretch, whereas if you had Bonner, maybe you'd call a timeout and try to steal some points before the half. Losher on to punt. Trying to pin this inside the 10. And Nathan feels it there for the return and just spins ahead for a couple of yards. Well, this season, along with their contributions to university's general scholarship funds, for every field goal and extra point made, Allstate also donated to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you, Allstate. Last two drives for Utah State, 12 plays, 147 yards and the two touchdowns. And keep in mind, 
That's after Logan Bonner, the record-setting starting quarterback, leaves the game. It's been Cooper Lega at quarterback. And Lega's been up to the challenge. I mean, he's made tight throws, and he hasn't had a very clean pocket either. I mean, been a few examples in which he's delivering the football under serious duress, and yet he's been able to put enough on the football to get it to his wide receivers as Utah State thought they were going to have it at the 11, but maybe there was a fake fair catch signal or something. So now they're backed up inside their own six. Half the distance penalty. And if you're Oregon State too, they decide to play conservative. You start firing your timeouts. See if you can't steal some points before the half as well. Tyler. Apparently makes it back to the line of scrimmage. So let's see how the timeouts are managed here. I'm really surprised. In this part of the field, I would without question be firing timeouts. No doubt. You're going to get great field position Absolutely. if you get the stop. Get the ball at the 50 or even on your side of the 50, just on the plus side of the 50. Really surprised they're letting this clock wind down. So Oregon State creeping up to the line here as they will pass out of it and they will get the first down to Tompkins, one of the very best receivers in the country. Will move the chains for Utah State and get them out of that hole. Right, they can play fast, of course, so two-minute operations, their normal offensive tempo. Now expect them to start moving with a little urgency. And they'll run it with Tyler, and Tyler will go ahead for 11 yards. Two timeouts remain for Utah State. And just keep moving. You got two timeouts, like you said. You can work the middle of the field. Just be hyper aware. Four man rush on Lega. And Lega goes to the 49 yard line to Tompkins. And they're saying incomplete. Kelly Arnold on coverage there. Remember, he had the interception in the end zone in the first quarter tonight. I know you want to work your best receiver, Devin Tompkins, if you have a favorable matchup, but I would not advise Cooper Lega to be pounding the middle of the field. You can work it if it's there, but do not get greedy. That was a very tight window. Had the defender been looking a little earlier, it could have very easily been intercepted. They get to the other side, and that is incomplete as well. Looking for McGriff, Justin McGriff, who's the six foot six target. Half a minute to play in the first half now. Of a no man's land here because if you throw it, now you're potentially kicking it. They can come after it, block a kick. But if you run it and they stop you, then you're looking at a situation where you got to punt it back to them anyways. They still have two timeouts and potentially 25 seconds to maybe put together their own two-minute drive. Third and ten. Lega has to step up and then is torn down. That is Keontae Shad with the sack. Now you brought up the points of managing the clock if you're Oregon State. And there was an opportunity to work the middle of the field, but it was well covered there at the second level by Oregon State. And a good job by that Oregon State defensive front, staying true to their rush lanes. And as soon as Lega broke from a passing posture, they converged. And now they fired that timeout, and you can expect them to come after this punt. So if I'm Utah State and I'm in that huddle, hey guys, we are going to block the heck out of this thing. Don't worry about getting down there in coverage. Protection first, make sure the ball's kicked, and as soon as you hear it kicked, then you take off. You gotta think the Beavers are gonna pin their ears back and bring the house. Game we thought we'd have, right, Greg? I mean, this is one of those games where you look and you see all the bowl mashups and 
You got a Mountain West Conference championship team. You got an Oregon State team that feels like they've got some program momentum. And we said it all week long. Good matchup. Good matchup on the field here. Amazing matchup. And two very contrasting styles. Yep. One team that's built to impose their will in the run game. Another team that's a little more spread oriented. Two very solid defenses. Just an excellent matchup across the board. Got Stanley the punter. 24 seconds to play in the first half. The Aussie helicopter spins this out to the right. So 19 seconds left, 37 yard line for Oregon State. Hey, we always invite you to kick off your NFL Sunday with the countdown crew. Steelers look to stay alive in the playoff picture. And an inside look at Micah Parsons' journey to becoming one of the NFL's premier pass rushers as a rookie. That is 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Countdown crew does such a great job. Get you set for Sunday. And then Laura and that NFL live crew take you through the week every week at 4 o'clock on weekdays and then your college football Saturdays. Aren't they glorious? And the bowl season has arrived as they fake the kneel down. We saw Purdue do that last month against Ohio State. As Flemings, the five foot five receiver was trying to get around the edge. And that will take the final seconds off of this first half. You like the annexation of Puerto Rico there at the end? Or the fumble ruski, whatever the heck they're calling it. I like I kind of like it personally. I just wish it went down his passing yards and somehow to find a way to throw it forward to the guy. I'll tell you, that was a fun first half. We had a vomiting eight-foot camel mascot. We had great play on the field. And we got the Mountain West Conference champs playing good ball with a lead over a Pac-12 team at the half. And a backup quarterback who had his spotlight and took advantage. Cooper Lega coming in and his first college pass. A 62-yard touchdown to Devin Tompkins. Lega had 100 yards passing in the touchdown. Nolan, 123 yards passing. Laura. Coach, Cooper Lega comes in and doesn't blink. What can you say about his performance as you guys get the ball coming out of halftime? Yeah, it's a good place to be. Four up get the ball back. Uh, what's crazy is he checked to that play. He didn't like the look. He knows everything we're doing in the meeting room. He knew exactly what he's supposed to do. Never blinked. Awesome. You guys have been able to get to their offense with your defense. How have you made him uncomfortable? You know, our quickness and speed, we knew that was our biggest advantage. Uh, size is a problem. We struggled against the run at times. But we're, we're able to move, and we are we do have good speed off the edge, and it's, it's keeping us in the game right now. All right, thanks, Thank Coach. You. Blake Anderson, <laughs> it's unbelievable they checked to the play. Blake Anderson, 14-10, his team leads. Good stuff here. The Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl from SoFi. The halftime report is still to come after this message. Welcome back to Capital One Bowl Mania. What a scene here at SoFi. Joe Tessitore, Greg McElroy, Laura Rutledge with you, and Utah State up 14 to 10 on Oregon State. Calvin Tyler with a touchdown run to put them up in the second quarter. First half stats are brought to you by PlayStation. A very impressive first half performance from Utah State defensively. Now, you look at those numbers, they're not exactly eye-popping to lose your quarterback, to have a lead against a quality opponent that does a great job on defense like Oregon State, Utah State has to be thrilled with the position they're in, especially getting the ball here in the second half. Unbelievable. Cooper Lega, who comes in his first pass of college football, goes for a 62-yard touchdown. Scarver, dangerous return man, but it's over his head. And then this was revealed when Laura met up with Blake Anderson. What's crazy is he checked to that play. He didn't like the look. He knows everything we're doing in the meeting room. He knew exactly what he's supposed to do. Never blink. Awesome. Think about that. You don't realize how crazy this is. So the first snap of the game, hey, check, check. Easy, easy. Hand signal, little burst down. What is the burst? Little post and go to the number one wide receiver on this Utah State team. Tompkins drops an absolute dime. As you can see, 
Now, we don't, it's the last 25 years, I think it's safe to say probably ever, the first quarterback to ever throw a touchdown pass in a bowl game. Comes to the near side on this first pass of the second half, goes to McGriff. So, in the last 25 years, when you can put these kind of stats together, this is the first college football player to, on his first pass of his career, throw a touchdown pass in a bowl game. Welcome to the big time, Cooper Lega. <laughs> It could have happened back in like 1898, but I, I can't confirm that. And Tyler takes the carries, tackled by Riley Sharp. So it'll be third down after that gain of three. It'll be third and three for the Aggies. Of course, pivotal first drive. See what the adjustments were from the defense. Always feel like the first drive of the second half is the most important drive of the entire game. Third down and three, sprint right for Lega. Pass protection gave way just a little bit, but the flag comes in at the end as Derek Wright was the intended target for the Aggies. And they're going to get a hold or a pass interference on the outside as looked like Rajon Wright tugged a jersey on the whip route. Pass interference, defense number one. The ball be placed at the spot of the fall and includes an automatic first down. So hard on some of these double moves as the wide receiver there, right, working inside, stopping on a dime and then working his way back to the sideline. And on that quick, sudden change of direction, Rajon Wright grabbed him at the bottom of his jersey. It was a good call by the official. So after the penalty, first down for Utah State at the 35 yard line. Mountain West champ playing good ball here with their backup quarterback, Tyler. Finds a seam, keeps his footing, and works his way for nine hard-earned yards. Riley Sharp finally makes the tackle of Calvin Tyler. It's almost like this guy Tyler had something, a little bit of an edge to him coming into this game. I mean, he's running possessed. I mean, making guys miss, continuing to churn his legs even on initial contact. Second and one, that'll move the chains. Of course, the backstory on Tyler, he's playing against his former teammates, played 14 games for Oregon State in his career, then transfers to Utah State. Chucky Keaton, who's the Aggies running back coach, was an assistant coach on the Oregon State staff. And that was with the former staff. Hopefully he'll be all right as he's getting checked out. He's had a pretty good workload tonight, made the most of it. Noah comes in to play running back as Lega gets it to the outside. That's incomplete and the flag will come in again as he was looking to connect with Derek Wright. Pass interference, defense number one. The ball be placed at the spot of the foul and includes an automatic first down. If I'm Utah State, as you can see, it's two now on this drive alone. That right arm reaching up around the shoulder, can't do it. If I'm Utah State, guess what? That guy's had two pass interference on one drive. I'm taking the top off. I'm going right at him, throwing a fade. Lega going to take a shot downfield. Look at the pull of the jersey again that time as Wright had coverage on Derek Wright. And there is no flag. I mean, that seemed as obvious as could be, Greg. I think the ball was starting to drift just a little bit out of bounds. I mean, goodness gracious. I mean, he's tugging the jersey again. But as you can see on the ball's pretty well thrown, lands out of bounds. But I think if he's not grabbed, that's a completion. And this is a completion to right. Let's bring in John Perry, our rules expert, for a moment. Flag comes down at the end with that tackle. John, what was your read on the last play we saw? Well, this one we might have a horse collar, but going back to the three, not two, pass interference calls, nice job by the deep wing official with the first two. That last one that you looked at needed to come from the back judge. Angles are everything, and he had the best look. We needed a flag for DPI. There is no foul for a horse collar tackle. The runner was not immediately brought back down to the ground. The result of the play is a first down. Okay, so that's the no pass interference replay. And meanwhile, John, this is the no horse collar. I don't have any problem. I think they were right there. He didn't tug him back directly. He did grab up around the faceplate, but for it to be a horse collar, you have to be tugged back immediately. Didn't look like he was. First down, 
Oiga stepping up in the pocket and gets it off to the side and smartly does so to Noah. And then Noah dives ahead for a first down. So a heads up play from Cooper Lega. I'll tell you, this kid for never been out there on the field. He is calm. He is confident. He'll ad lib. He'll check into things. Look at this. And I'm telling you, he's trying to become a guest on the Kimmel show because I'll tell you what, man, this guy's playing like Mahomes. Playing out of his mind. By the way, Jimmy's going to be joining us in moments right here in the booth. Hit as he throws that time. So that goes incomplete. Jimmy Kimmel going to be joining us. Give us his reaction to everything tonight. Some great entertainment throughout the evening. And a bowl game unlike anything we've seen. Especially when you have an eight and a half foot tall, 250 pound camel as a mascot who's vomiting outside the stadium <laughs> on ABC primetime. That and Matt Damon on ur urinal cakes, I mean, we got it all covered here. Got to love it. I thought I'd hear that in a football game. <laughs> Noah breaking free and inside the 10-yard line, and Utah State is in business with a first and goal. And if he doesn't lose his footing, Noah's to the house. Nothing there, struggling to get back to the line of scrimmage. And as he was tackled by Andre Hughes-Murray and Kyrie Fisher. And at this point, Trent Bray, defensive coordinator for Oregon State, he's got to be thinking, man, we just need to pin our ears back and come after him. I mean, back against the wall, send the house, blitz everybody. And let's see if this young quarterback knows what he's doing and knows where his answers are with some of these pressures. That's what I'd do. Young quarterback, heat him up. Let's see how he responds. Second and goal, Lega. Had time and then is torn down by Hughes Murray. Six-year player, three-time team captain. Great job by Hughes Murray. Working upfield, giving a quick swim underneath, and dropping Lega. That's a great job of being aware where the quarterback is in the pocket when he wins in his pass rush. 12th play of this drive coming, and they haven't faced a third down on this drive until now. Keep an eye on 13, motioning across the ball. That's where I'm looking, my number one wide receiver. Let's see if they can find a favorable matchup for him. See now motions out. He's right there at the top. Third and goal. They keep it on the ground, and Noah doesn't find much of anything. Omar Spates fitting up that run and making the tackle. Great job by Oregon State there. You're on your heels. Defense is really getting pushed around. Utah State starting to impose their will in the run game, and they buckle down inside the tent, get the sack, and now they come off with limited damage, just a field goal from what was a very good opening drive from Utah State. Connor Coles, 25-yard Field goal attempt. And he punches it through. And Utah State pushes their lead to seven. The host of the night in the booth when we return, Jimmy Kimmel himself from L.A. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl presented by Stiefel. Oregon State's defense able to hold Utah State to a field goal just then coming out of halftime. And Oregon State head coach Jonathan Smith will be at least a little bit happy about that. He said they absolutely could not give up a touchdown, didn't want to give up any points, but said a field goal would at least be okay. They're looking at a situation where he's incredibly impressed by Cooper Lega, the quarterback on the Utah State side, that he knows they're going to be in a fight here. They have to limit the self-inflicted mistakes and Greg because that's what he said really hurt him in the first half. They actually feel decent about their position offensively because it was really more on them than their opponent. Now, Lega has been impressive. Who would think that? Backup quarterback. He's got his team up by seven here against Oregon State. Jimmy Kimmel, L.A. Bowl presented by Stiefel. What a night we've had. Great game on the field and so much entertainment in and around the stadium as Irish takes it on the return. And that is because of the guy who now joins us in the booth, Joe and Greg, with the man himself. Thanks, Thomas guys. Cole. Thank you. <laughs> this is outrageous, my man. I mean, it's just outrageous. Is this, the, this is one of the dumbest things I've ever done, and, uh, <laughs> and one of the most fun, too. 
It is. This is, by the way, what the champions get. They get the championship belt. This is Vegas the Vegas guy. That's appropriate, a championship belt. I agree. You know what? I grew up watching boxing in Las Vegas, and this is, to me, feels better than a trophy. <laughs> you certainly can't wear a trophy around your waist. And uh, don't you hate when celebrities come in the booth and then take attention away from the game itself? I'll be quiet. <laughs> well, we can do a little bit of both here. We can have some fun with it. As they quickly get it out to Harrison, Harrison goes ahead for a first down. It's very understated. I was going to say, it's, it's, yeah, it's really not, uh, not that high. Is that 24 karat gold? It there? is. This is worth $6.5 million. Oh, wow, okay. It's just appraised. And, very uh, nice, yeah. It's beautiful. Jimmy, you started, I mean, who knew that you played the clarinet? You come out with the marching band. I was the clarinet to open the night. I was in the marching band in uh, high school, and that's the closest I got to playing football, really. <laughs> and I played the clarinet, which is. It just, yeah, it didn't, uh, it wasn't great meeting girls wise. <laughs> Here's first down, Chance Nolan. He's got time to wind it up, and he's able to connect, and he goes to Quatoriano for another Oregon State first down. So you, you put your stamp on this bowl game. You come out with the marching band. We also have the signature sandwich. We're going to bring in the signature sandwich. Guillermo here. has Guillermo, brought you. Here's Guillermo. Guillermo. Look at this. Oh, we're hungry now. Thank you. These are beautiful, aren't Thank they? No, these are these are very nice. Now, Roast beef. I was watching the show when you when you debuted it. Yeah, John and, and, and Vinny. Tell, yeah, John, tell us how you came up with this. Guillermo, this is a sandwich I used to make when I was working at a pizza place in high school. It's a uh, cold roast beef, nice uh, uh, ciabatta with melted provolone on it, and the uh, beef is dipped in uh, Italian dressing. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's a shame that everyone can't be eating this right now. Guillermo, you want, you want to be the... The taste tester. Do you want to give him? A, oh, you, you already have one for the first time. He's watching yeah. his way. That is absolutely the first time. The game. You know, it's bulk season. I think Tess, you need to have one. You've lost a few. You need to put a couple back on. It's it, it December. Does look great. We it got a long way great. to go until until beach season. You're all right. I got to tell you, a lot of guys, a lot of people are watching you right now. I'm getting texts from. I got texts from Matthew McConaughey. I think he's jealous that I have say? a bowl game and that he doesn't. You, th you think maybe he could get one down in Texas? We get a Texas bowl game. That I told him I'd give him this one next year if he really. Really wants it. It's going to cost him, though, right? Bill Murray is watching this game right now. Oh, really? He told me before game. the game that. You do one in Soldier Field for him. He told me that Utah State fans are great fans. I don't know how he knows that, but he seems to know things. Okay, Laurel, what do you think? All right. Look, at, look at the size of the bite out of Rutledge here. I mean, you got the roast wow. beef coming around here. What do you think? Sorry, <laughs> right, guys. You know what? I think the banana peppers are a really nice touch. Yeah. Yeah. Laura's the real deal. She'll very eat a nice. sandwich like that. <laughs> it's very nice. Here's third down and five. As they keep it on the ground with Low, and he is ripped down and tackled by Justin Rice, who's had 115 tackles in the regular season. He got two kinds of peppers on the sandwich. It's of course. Nice call. Hang on, hang on Tess. Let's, I want to ask Jimmy. I want to yeah. know, would you have gone for it here on fourth down plus territory? Greg, you know I always go for it. I mean, it's, You just got to live it, right? It's just my philosophy, yeah. <laughs> I go for it. <laughs> Whether it's playing clarinet or making a sandwich. <laughs> Oregon State is uh, not as aggressive as they will have the attempt by Everett Hayes. It'll be a 44-yard field goal attempt for Oregon State. Oh, boy. And it stays to the left. Can I tell you why that happened? Yeah, why that happen? My yeah. cousin Sal's friend Harry bet the over. <laughs> and that was, I mean, that do it. definitely going to happen. He's Eddie Mush. He's the, He's the mush. mush. He's the <laughs> mush. <laughs> That's mushiest. what happened. Now we know. So guys, somehow I am... Somehow I avoided the vomit from the camel, and the sandwich <laughs> has ripped all down oh, my shoes. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. Sorry, Laura. Oh. <laughs> That's the Italian dressing it's marinated in. <laughs> oh. oh, Laura. Joe, Greg, and Laura back with you at the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. First college football game ever played at SoFi. The first bowl game with a living person as the title sponsor. Can you and he's believe living and breathing right in between us? Hope they built this stadium just for this game. It's, it's, amazing. Amazing. it's amazing. Incredible. Yeah. And beautiful. Ripalega in at quarterback for Utah State as Tyler will get the work. All right, Jimmy, we've gone through the sandwich, we've talked about the clarinet. But there's another item I'm curious about here at the stadium with your infused theme tonight. Is, it's uh, this is just our director is going to be very upset. I cannot believe but that this. is a urinal cake with Matt Damon's face on it. <laughs> yeah, those are in all the restrooms. The oh. men's are only the men's rooms. 
Um, that was a, just a delightful little surprise. I'm not sure who <laughs> did that, but I you got did a not text. Hand make those? I got a text from one of uh, my coworkers this morning who was here, and I said, "Well, what is that?" And he said, "I don't know. They're in all the." All the urinals. Somehow, I don't know if Matt did that, if he wanted to be a part of the game. That's probably what happened. Yeah. He probably commissioned those. Have you heard from Matt tonight that people are uh, taking care of their business? We and, don't. Um, we don't. He's uh, the target. Yeah, we don't communicate in a friendly no. way. Would you ever <laughs> consider, like, maybe an LVP trophy in honor of Matt Damon? Uh, no, I would not. You would no. not? No. Okay. Okay. I got you. <laughs> just the least valuable player. Yes. I wouldn't do that to the kids, you know? They work too hard. <laughs> well, you could give it to the broadcast team. To be insulted be... like that. <laughs> we can give it As to the As do you guys, wow. by the way. Calvin Tyler <laughs> is down at the end of this play, so the trainers are out there tending to him and he's about to get up as they're trying to help him to his feet after that last rush he had for six yards and he got shaken up a second ago had to come out of the game on the last drive and that's really a big loss potentially for Utah State he's been electric tonight he's been so good between the tackles and on the perimeter going against his former team of course the transfer from Oregon State that's now really become a featured player within this offense. You can see kind of get grabbed a little awkwardly with that left leg. And he's up on his feet, walking off under his own power. So very relieved to see that. He's been a real fun player to watch throughout the course of the night. Had the 15-yard touchdown earlier tonight. And his 16 carries for 92 yards. But he's able to walk off there. Yeah. Uh, not, by the way, the Jimmy Camel mascot. I mean, everybody just loved it. Loved. Uh, my my daughter, who's seven years old, goes, "What? This is a kid. It's named Jimmy Camel. <laughs> she she doesn't know what's going on right now. She re I really uh, up my status with the kids this evening. <laughs> Can, I would have voted for the coyote personally, Mangy the coyote. <laughs> the Mangy coyote. Yeah. Um, Got a know. pass back. Oh. Double pass here. As he gets it back to Lega. This is the quarterback striding downfield as it was Derek Wright who threw back to Cooper Lega. Kimmel, you come into the booth and crazy things happen. I love seeing plays like that. I just love that kind of stuff. That reminds me of the old days. Look at this. A little and back he runs it. Well, his name is Lega. It makes sense that he would run. You got to leg it out? Yeah, I like sure. that. That makes sense. I, I see the pun. Uh, excellent design. And I can tell you this, as a backup quarterback, in both college and the NFL, we didn't get those reps. That was probably the first time he's ever run that play. I would imagine in practice it went to the starter. Lega taking a shot downfield at 15 and gets this complete to Devin Tompkins. I mean, the story that's playing out here with Lega, Jimmy, he had never even thrown a college football pass. He comes into the game, he's putting on a show. Can I tell you something? When the team came to see my show, we didn't even let him come in the studio. He had to sit in the hall. <laughs> So this is incredible. <laughs> Pumps, looks, tries to extend, and then is able to shake free and turn the corner. And Greg, we said it earlier, this is a guy who won state championships in football, won state championships in track and field, won state championships in wrestling. Just a great gamer and athlete. He's yeah. won a couple of um, local mustache awards. I think so. <laughs> I looked up his high school picture, by the way, when he went in. Very, very clean cut. Goes to Utah State, grows the hair out, grows the mustache. I love it, man. Yeah, it's a good look. Very dazed and confused. I'm sure <laughs> McConaughey is yeah, jealous of this, too. All right, all right. Very good. Well, he's been fantastic, man. I, I mean, weathering the storm, one of the biggest games your program's had. Chasing the 11th win, opportunity to back up what was an incredible performance in the conference championship game and to be thrust into the lineup and to respond to the adversity, man, he has been such a fun guy to watch tonight. Here's Blake Anderson's sophomore backup quarterback. His number three elevated to number two with an injury to the backup during bowl practices. Oh. And now a direct snap on third and four. And it's going to be a first and goal as Noah takes it straight ahead. They're pulling out everything here at Utah State. A lot of trick plays here. I like that. And Lega did some acting there, too. He pretended to be looking at the sideline. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Hand on the hips and everything. <laughs> Impressive. Playing it off, low snap, picks it up to the corner for the fade. And unable to connect with Devin Tompkins. That time Tompkins almost too quick for his own good. It was open too early. And Lega just couldn't get it out of his hands fast enough. Allowed the, the defender. That we time it was Jaden Grant. 
It allowed him to recover quickly enough to break up the pass. Second and goal. As our host watches on this long drive by Utah State, Lega stumbled and then goes ahead. And no gain there as Hughes Murray is able to make the tackle on Cooper Lega. I don't know why I'm nervous for him, but I, I am. <laughs> this is a good game. It is a good game. All right, what's the play call here, Jimmy? Would you throw to number 13, Devin Tompkins, the number one wide receiver for Utah State, who's light up way down here at the bottom? Would you throw to him? Yeah, I throw to DT. I think um, they were pretty close. They almost had it the first play, and so why not run it again? Or maybe another trick play. Who knows? These guys are tricky. He looks DT's way. Then he goes to the seam, oh. and he's got the touchdown to Brandon Bowling. Cooper Lega, star is born, Kimmel. Unbelievable. This poor kid, they're going on Christmas break. He can't even come back to a big parade at school. He'll be big man on campus. He'll be us at it all right here. He'll be alone on campus going, where is everybody for my parade? Backup quarterback who's pushed into duty when Logan Bonner leaves with an injury in the first half. Guillermo, come on in here. What do you got there, my friend? Come on in here. Oh. We're going to say goodbye to Guillermo and Jimmy. Well, Merry what Christmas, a, What a host you are. That Christmas is lovely. cookies. That Guillermo Bakey's himself. Congratulations. This Thanks, is awesome. Justin. Appreciate it's it. It's awesome. <laughs> Great to see you, Greg. Absolutely. Merry Thanks, Christmas. Jimmy. Merry Christmas Merry to you. Christmas. Thanks, Thanks for calling Guillermo. this game so beautifully and allowing me to make a mockery of college football. Going to be handing that out in just a little bit. Yes. Jimmy yes, Kimmel. His bowl, the L.A. Bowl, more to come when we come back to SoFi. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Anything can happen as long as you have to drive. Goodyear, more driven. Thousands have been affected by the Southern and Midwest tornadoes. If you'd like to help, please visit redcross.org slash ESPN to help Red Cross respond and help people recover from this disaster. We got a 24-10 Utah State lead, led by their backup quarterback, who has never played a snap before, was the number three quarterback all year. Never played a snap, a pass, thrown a pass of college football. And we just got word that the preferred pronunciation of this quarterback is Cooper Lega. We've been saying Lega, a guy who wasn't expected to play, hadn't thrown a pass in his entire career. Preferred pronunciation, Lega, so we apologize for that, but we will make the change. And I think we'll be saying it again if history is any indicator because he has been outstanding tonight. And you also have to give credit to, I mean, that was one heck of a drive called by Anthony Tucker. I mean, double passes and using their best player, Tompkins, as a decoy. I mean, that was a thing of beauty from a play calling perspective from the start of that drive to the end. Just a great job of taking advantage there throughout the course of it, both on the ground and in the air. And we'll see what Oregon State can do to try to come back here as Irish tries to get to the edge, is able to break a tackle and a 20-yard touchdown run to start the game. This time he goes for five yards off the left side. I'll tell you, those Christmas cookies that Guillermo dropped off were amazing. Yeah, you have something in your tooth. Yep. Yeah, oh yeah, big old sprinkle. Yeah. Well, good though, it's worth it. <laughs> Saving it for later? Second and four. E.J. Baylor only 44 yards rushing, Greg. Pac 12's leading rusher. Came in for over 1,200 yards, and here he's able to get the first down. And he also has to take into account his first carry there from scrimmage was about 12 yard gain on the first play of the game. So since that moment, I mean, they have really held him in check. And it's because of the athleticism of Utah State. Look, this is a big, physical, imposing offensive line and run game. But you can't latch on if guys are constantly moving. So far, Utah State's athleticism has won out against the sheer power of the Beavers' offensive line. Chance Nolan. And chased down from behind and then is taken down. As that was Cam Lampkin who was able to track him. 
Obviously a lot of football left to be played. Of course, Oregon State is a team that's really built to play with the lead. Not really a team that's built to play from behind. Of course, they got behind big early to Oregon last time out. Played much better in the second half as they reverted more to a passing attack. So it's going to be up to Chance Nolan to be very accurate when he throws the football. Second and seven. Comes to the near side and is able to get it to Harrison for a first down. Across midfield to the 45 yard line. 16 yards there for Trayshawn Harrison. You have to think too, I mean, the first three plays was as if Utah State's defense was drinking water out of a fire hose. I mean, bang, bang, bang. Three big plays in a row, touchdown. But since then, the last, gosh. Let me do my math real quick. 44 minutes of game action. They've been pretty lights out. That was to Quitteriano. No one's trying to find a rhythm, trying to respond here, trailing by two touchdowns to the Mountain West Conference champs. I like this play calling on this series so far from Brian Lindgren. Doing a pretty good job of mixing run pass giving Utah State's defense a bunch of different looks, a bunch of different formations, player. and are creating some easy completions for their quarterback to get him into the rhythm. Defensive lineman down for Utah State. That is Vakuda, who's been playing a good bit this year. He's improved greatly, big sophomore. On the interior of that defensive line, he's able to get up and make his way off the field. Bowl Challenge Cup standings are brought to you by Progressive. Of course, it's early. It was last year's standings. That's how it finished up last year. In Big 12, obviously a remarkably good year last year. The MAC, shockingly, a group that's kind of struggled historically in bowl games. Off to a little bit of a slow start this year. As you can see, the SEC a very strong year. Well, the SEC is going to have 13 opportunities this year. <laughs> right. And two teams in the playoffs. So that means yeah. everyone kind of moves up a notch. So if the SEC can match what they did last year, that would be one heck of a performance in the postseason. Quick to the outside as he's able to get it to Bolden. Bolden trying to reach for that line of game, but it'll be third and one. Four down territory here. I think for Oregon State, they've been relatively conservative, I feel like, throughout most of the game. I think this is definitely a situation where you just lean on that offensive line. I'd be shocked if they did anything other than just run big old number 12, the hammer, Coletto. That is who is power. in. The linebacker who comes in for short yardage, he's going to take it himself and look at him go. Oh, so easy for the all-purpose player. And this is what he has done this year. He's played quarterback, he's been linebacker, special teams, fullback, interceptions, every which way, a receiving touchdown that he had against Utah in that big win, and then a 47-yarder, Greg, against Arizona State. Yeah, I mean, this guy has been so fun to watch, so versatile, and is obviously, he's a tone setter with his physicality. Stays in, in the I formation, play action off of it, and then checking down to B.J. Baylor, and Baylor makes the first man miss, and he gets it down near the 10-yard line. Well, Oregon State is marching, trying to close things here into the lead of Utah State. The Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl presented by Stiefel returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. ESPN. Home of the college football playoff semifinals, Friday, December 31st on ESPN. Hey fans, you can join us virtually for the college football playoff all access virtual experience. There's exclusive content, games, prize drops. Register today at ESPN.com slash CFP all access. Man, I'm getting so psyched to sit back Oh, and watch the CFP semis. Wait. We got the Sugar Bowl the next day, obviously New Year's Day. So we're going to be in New Orleans, and we're just blocking out oh, like about eight and a half gonna hours. Be amazing. You got, we got to put you in charge of ordering the food. For yeah, that. I'm going to have a bourbon drink. We're going to watch good football. I'm just very excited about everything that's coming up in the next couple weeks. Well, I'm glad you'll be well hydrated. <laughs> Chance Nolan 
He's going to run inside the 10, took a hard hit as he goes down at the eight yard line. That was Shaq Bond who came up to tackle him. It's a big drive. Obviously, two score game, plenty of time. Nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to be concerned about. Got all the time in the world. But it's absolutely pivotal you get seven here. Because right now, you get turned away after what's been a fantastic drive. That would be a gut punch and a win mentally for Utah State. Baylor, stop and start. And it's going to be third down and six. Can get a first down at the one yard line for Jonathan Smith's team. And so Utah State in that third quarter, open it up with a field goal. And then Lagao to bowling for a touchdown. And now Oregon State trying to answer. What are we looking for here on third down, Greg? If I'm Utah State, I'm going to heat up. Chance Nolan, I want to bring some pressure. They've done a pretty good job of mixing the looks so far tonight. I'm going to bring a blitz here, force it out of the quarterback's hands. Third and six, Nolan. Looking for an answer, and as he throws, he was being harassed by Nick Henninger, who's been so active tonight. He has two sacks, and Henninger was all over Chance Nolan. And let's see, was he actually down? Hmm? Yes, there you go. Left knee is down on the ground before the ball is delivered and I cannot say enough about the disruption that's been caused by Utah State's defensive line. Henninger and Vaughns and Matua, Puaka, Moore, you name it, they have been excellent in creating opportunities against one of the best offensive lines in college football. Trey Lowe yet to get up after that play. Henninger has been awesome. That should be reported as a sack. But to your point, one of the best offensive lines in college football this year. Only gave up 10 sacks coming into this game. Now Henninger's been all over them. They're going to review that, and we're going to take a short break as they do. And we're going to stay here. There's the word that we're getting as they take the quick look at the review. I think this will be pretty clear and quick. Now the biggest thing yep. that they're going to have to figure out is at what yard line was he down? And then what's the situation with the clock? Of course, it's stopped as of right now, but it will wind on the ready for play because he was obviously tackled in the field of play. A great job that Efrem Banda has done, defensive coordinator for Utah State. After further review, the quarterback's knee was down with possession of the ball before he threw it at the 16-yard line. The ball was placed at the 16-yard line where it is fourth down. So that's three sacks for Henninger. Their fourth as a team, their sixth tackle for loss. Tell you what, man, it's just, it's hard to hit a moving target, and it's been all night long in the pass rush. Both Henninger, Vaughns, they've constantly been able to get around and use their athleticism against those big tackles for Oregon State. Hayes will come on for the 34-yard attempt. And he puts it through. Their first points since 8.40 of the second quarter comes by way of the field goal from Everett Hayes. Hey, Greg, you know what you're doing Monday at 2.30 in the afternoon? What's you're that, watching Jeff? the Myrtle Beach Bowl presented by Tax Act. It's Old Dominion against a Tulsa team you're very familiar with. And then you know what I'm doing Tuesday? Uh, let me know, because I know what I'm doing. It's the seven seed of days for sure. Not a yeah. Tuesday fan. However, this Tuesday, I'll make an exception. The famous Idaho Potato oh. Bowl. Kent State, really fun team to watch. A lot of tempo. Can they get it going against a very powerful brute strength force team? in Wyoming, and then of course, UTSA, 12 and one UTSA, conference champs, taking on San Diego State, a team that lost to this Utah State team 
just a couple weeks ago in the Mountain West Championship. So a lot to look forward to here bowl season. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Sure is. Scarborough's a dangerous return man. But they've been able to handle him tonight. He has seven kickoff return touchdowns in his career. Player Spotlight is brought to you by Cameo. Cooper Laga. That is the correct pronunciation as we corrected ourselves just a few minutes ago. Listen, the kid never played. He never thrown a pass before in college football. He's the number three all year. And Cooper Laga has gone out and just been sensational. Unbelievable. I mean, first play from scrimmage first career pass attempt and the first player ever to throw a touchdown in a bowl game on their first pass attempt. Of course, they say the last 25 years, I'm not so sure. Of course, he added another one later. Cooper Laga has been fantastic tonight. Little known player, was number three all year, was red shirted, didn't even play last year, didn't have any stats this year at all, didn't have any stats in his career. And Cooper Laga comes in, and his first pass is a 62-yard touchdown. Cold off the bench, and he checked to it. He checked to it, changed the play, and threw it downfield. And now he's going down from this Oregon State defense as a flag comes in at the end as Shad came in with Andre Hughes-Murray. And you can see their disappointment with this flag. After the play was over, personal foul. Defense number 32 to push him out the helmet of the quarterback. A 15 yard dribble being enforced includes an automatic first down. Well, that's how they tag Keontae Shad. And you'll see, I mean, it's a great play up front. They win. There's absolutely nothing Laga can do, but watch 32 right here at the end pushes his helmet down and route to getting up. You just can't do it. I mean, the referee's right there. I mean, that's just, and it's blatant too. You can see his eyes go down, his hands go right on the helmet. I mean, you just can't do it. It's a dumb play. It's a game-changing play. Look at the time that Laga has. And it's intercepted. And they're going to say, no, he's out of bounds. Oladapo was celebrating an interception. And they're going to say he was not in the field of play. It was a great effort. He obviously caught the ball, tried to get that foot down. Does he get it down? The official says no. Let's take a peek. Catches it there. Oh! You tell me. Is that right foot down in bounds? Let's see. This looks like an interception. Does he have control of it right there? The foot's clearly down in bounds. But does he have control? Looks like he does. I think they're going to overturn the ruling on the field. And how about the play? Heads up by Oladapo, knowing where he's at on the field. Play is under review. Oladapo says, I got myself a pick. They reverse the call. Lagos pass intercepted by Oladapo. How about it, man? Just a great job by Oladapo. Getting over the top of Tompkins, securing the catch, throws just a little bit deep. Tompkins tried to make a defensive play on it, but the biggest thing is the awareness of where you're at on the field. As soon as he catches it, eyes go straight down. I mean, look at the eyes immediately down to the ground to see exactly how much room he has. And because of that, he's able to drop that right foot in just in the nick of time. Just an amazing play and terrific awareness by the safety. So Oregon State's offense comes back out there, trailing by 11 here, 12 and a half to play in the fourth quarter. And they got that turnover chainsaw cranking on the sideline. There's Chance Nolan. Steps up and now will run it and catches a big seam before he slides down at the 36. Good job by Chance Nolan. Feels that presence coming up. Feels that pass rush that's one vertical over and over and over again. And by the way, they're now keeping a receiver in to take Henninger out, give him a chip on the way out because he's given so many fits to this offense. But that time, Henninger gets pushed a little bit too deep. The hole opens, and Chance Nolan hits it. Out of the I formation, here is Baylor. And Baylor's trying to get to that edge. Henninger with three sacks tonight. 
And remember, big picture, Greg. First bowl game for Oregon State since 2013. They had seven straight losing seasons. Now this season here, where they feel like there's some program momentum, especially if you can win a game like this against another conference champion. They've struggled away from Corvallis, 1-5 on the road this year. But this is a meaningful game. You know, in bowl season, not everything is of the same way. It's a meaningful game for these two programs for where they are in their development. But to the outside as he goes to Harrison for a first down. Another nice throw there from Nolan. He's in a good rhythm throwing the football. It's the protection that's kind of let him down, but they're trying now to account for that protection. Henninger, number 42 here on the end of the line of scrimmage. Every time they've dropped back to pass, they've had an extra blocker to help out the left tackle in protection. And go to Harrison, and look at Harrison, ball is out! And Utah State comes up with it! That is Von Pachin. And it was Justin Rice who punched it out. How about it? Justin Rice, number three, right there in the middle of your screen. Look at him bring that right arm, that big, strong right arm, right on the football to stymie another drive. I mean, the ball isn't loose, it's high and tight. I mean, it's in a good position. Just gets knocked free. What a job by the linebacker. Utah State takes over. As Tyler was banged up earlier, sent back. That's a huge play by Justin Rice. Harris Rice has been well throughout. He's had a wild career path. Second nine. And some bleeding clock here. And timeout's going to be used by Utah, Utah State. State. Their first of the half. 30 seconds. Now Rice just made that big play defensively, the force fumble. Now this is a guy who had previously been in the Mountain West Conference. He began his career at Fresno State as a running back. They moved him to linebacker. He was all conference. But then with COVID, he wanted to play. So he went elsewhere to Arkansas State during the COVID year. Then he follows the coaching staff back to the Mountain West Conference. Just came up with this play. A huge play, and he's been huge all year. I mean, this is a guy that has a great understanding of what they want to be defensively and has really set the tone there at the second level. You can see the production tonight. I mean, he's had to be big. Against this run game, that defensive line sometimes going to get eat up. you got to have that eraser at the second level. And Justin Rice has filled that role beautifully throughout the course of this game. And he is taken down as they were all over him. Hughes Murray and Jaden Grant combining on the tackle of Cooper Laga. Sophomore quarterback, spent the years in number three. But the backup for this bowl, who has pressed into action through his first college football pass. And it went for 62 yards and a touchdown. And he's played well since. And now facing a third and 13, what are you looking for, Greg? A little blood in the water if you're Oregon State. So far, you've been able to a little bit rattle, had an interception. Now you drop Lagab behind the line of scrimmage. Maybe you heat him up here and play a little press man on the outside. Pressure on him. And it's incomplete. It was almost right into the hands of Keontae Shad. But they will be punting away with nine and a half minutes left here in the game. And they just have five guys along the line of scrimmage. They walk Spates up to the outside. He's unblocked. And a really nice job, too, by Shad to knock the ball down on the screen. Just a great design there by Trent Bray, the defensive coordinator. 
Cotson Lee's fourth punt of the night. As Gould looks for a return, he retreats back to the 15-yard line, and the coverage gets him there. So good special teams coverage. Problem was, it comes after Utah State's first three and out of the evening. Oregon State's going to have the ball over nine minutes to play, trailing by 11. We'll see what they come up with. The Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl, presented by Stiefel on ABC, is brought to you by Cameo. This holiday, give someone you love a personalized video from their favorite star. What a week these two teams have had here at the Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl, Utah State with the lead in the fourth quarter here. It's been all about having fun, but also trying to stay focused. That was something that Blake Anderson felt like he really needed to get his team dialed in on. And even talking to him pregame, he said, I think their focus is where I want it, but we'll have to see when we get in the game. Also, guys, talking to these players as they first drove by SoFi Stadium, mm -hmm. they said it was magnificent, almost took their breath away. They were ready for the spotlight of this opportunity. Yeah, it is a, just a dynamic facility. This is the first college football game ever played here. Quintoriano, as they set up the tight end screen, of course, the Super Bowl is going to be here, or you'll be out here with the NFL team with coverage of that. And then a year from now, Greg, the CFP National Championship game will be played on this field, but this is the first college game. Baylor on second and one, and he gets free before he's finally tackled by Hunter Reynolds. I'll tell you what. It's like Novocaine, a good run game, just give it time. It's always going to work. Right there, Baylor finally gets an opportunity to break an arm tackle. Utah State's done an amazing job all night long of being very sound at the point of attack, yet create chaos along the line of scrimmage. But that time, couldn't bring down the powerful running Baylor there at the line of scrimmage. Play action. Look who's there again, but no one escapes, Henninger and then throws it away. I mean, that's such a good play by Nolan. My goodness, I know it's gonna go down as an incompletion. Not all incompletions are created equal. This is an unbelievable play. I mean, this is a sack fumble half the time. But what does Nolan do? He makes the first guy miss, allows the tackle to recover. He airmails it in the direction of an intended wide receiver. That's an unbelievable play. Don't make a bad play worse. Sometimes they win, live to play second and 10. Andrew beat his man. Now he got a little anxious as there was movement on the left side of the line. It looked like Joshua Gray who oh, left early. Offense, number 67, five yard penalty. Down. Well, that happens when you're going up against Henniger, who has three sacks tonight. Yeah, he's been off the charts, and he has been so quick, and it's just constant pressure off the edge. He's one vertical. He's one underneath. He's beaten tight ends as they've come across the formation, and he's also contributed in the run game. Just relentless effort over and over and over again by number 42 at the end of the line of scrimmage. Now on the right side, thank goodness, Josh Gray, the left tackle, getting a little break. Second and 15. Nolan able to get it complete, but pushed out of bounds is Champ Flemings. Five foot five, 142 pounds of Champ Flemings. Yeah, he's, I don't know if he's that big either. <laughs> he can move. He does what he can there. Because it wasn't much. And yet another third and long for this Oregon State offense. They're just not built to be in situations like this. The screen game's been good. That's where I'd go again. I'd try to get a screen somewhere. If I could, I'd like to get it to my best ball carry. Number four, B.J. Baylor is at the top of the screen, motioning back into the backfield. Saw the stat, the top six nationally on third down conversions, but struggling tonight, just three of 10. Third and 12. And they're gonna rain down some more yellow hankies. This is going to be likely. It should be on the right guard. Noose, Keo Bonham. Just too long there at the line of scrimmage. False start. Offense number 69. Five yard penalty. And down. Hey, now, 
It's, I mean, this is not necessarily the offensive line's fault. I mean, they're up there forever. They're making checks. They're making adjustments. You're in your stance. These guys wearing white jerseys are breathing fire in their pass rush. And you're 310 pounds and you got to mm -hmm. stay squatted for 30 seconds. You have to snap the ball. I know it's a critical down and distance. You can't expect your offensive line to hold it forever. It's now third and 17 because of that. Third and 17, no win. They're going to go with the dump off to Baylor. And not much there as Justin Rice adds to his tackle total. You have to punt it here. I mean, if it's fourth and three, fourth and four, I'd go for it. But, man, the fact that they're leaving the offense on the field on fourth and 12 on your own side it basically is saying it comes down to this. This, this is, is the play. This is it. Yeah, I mean, your own 42-yard line on a fourth and 12. From your own 42. Here we go, fourth and 12. Desperation time for the Beavers. They get it complete, but can he get to the line to gain? Effort by Musgrave, it'll depend on the mark. Luke Musgrave needed three extra yards, and based on that spot, he may be short. Unbelievable effort by Musgrave. And just to be short, he danced a little bit. Would love that big 255 pound body to just bowl forward, but instinct takes over. You want to make some guys miss. I just don't know if he had the momentum to be able to drag them across the line to gain. It looks like it's going to be just a little bit short. Sergio De Hoyos was that line judge who put down his foot there. And they're stretching the chain, and it is short. A failed fourth down, fourth and 12, and they come up just short. Utah State with a stop with 6.45 to play. As you can see, it's a good throw. You got to trust. You would love that throw to come out just a little bit earlier to not allow the defender to recover quickly enough. But how about the rally of the football? Look how many white jerseys there are. There's about seven Utah State Aggies that are right there at the line to gain. Look at all of them right there converging. Where are the Beaver players? Where's the Beaver offensive line that's going to come surge and sprint and hit their guy across the line? That's a hustle play by the Aggies, and they won that fourth down play which led Musgrave to be just a little bit short. And now it's time to work that clock for the Aggies as Ty will do that. Let's bring in our three-time Super Bowl official, John Perry. John, ask for the mechanics of making that spot on that last key play. The mechanics were absolutely perfect by both line of scrimmage people. They're working in tandem. The near side official trails, just like he's supposed to, takes a look at the other side. Both of them mirror the spot. Great job in live action getting the correct spot. And that correct spot is what now hands the ball to Utah State. Ten win Mountain West Conference champions. Looking to win the first Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl. Tyler again. We'll get plenty of work down the stretch. Let's go back to that fourth down because this is all effort. Look at how many white jerseys converge. Count them. Four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight white jerseys, even nine. Go there. There might be nine white jerseys that are closer to the ball carrier than any Oregon State player. That's inexcusable. That's a want to. And that was about wanting it more. Utah State did. They won the down. Third and seven, Laga. Oh, great effort by Bowling. Cooper Laga to Brandon Bowling. 11 yards and a first down. Another nice throw. Great catch, too. 
I mean, these wide receivers, they are as advertised. I mean, my goodness, we know about Tompkins. He's legit. But you got Wright, you got McGriff, who's got such length. And don't forget about Bowling, who just at 5'9", unbelievable hands in the middle of that, when he goes over the middle on some of those in-breaking routes. Huge play by Bowling, a guy who followed the current staff to Utah State from Arkansas State. His wide receiver coach, Kyle Cephalo, was with him at both schools. And he said, this is who I want to play for. This is where I want to be. And they're four minutes and 41 seconds away from being bowl winners. You know, Jimmy Kimmel's got that hardware. He's got that championship belt, the oversized championship belt, like he's Roman Reigns that he's going to hand out. Lots of stars on display in L.A. for Utah State tonight, but Devin Tompkins, their receiver, six catches for 115 yards and a touchdown, his ninth 100-yard game this season. And he's used to balling out on the football field, but he also has two kids. He has one daughter, Naomi, one son, Messiah. Naomi's three, Messiah is two. He says that being a father, the best thing he's ever done, but also the most difficult thing and challenging, a challenge that he gets up for every single day. Living with a two-year-old, guys, his Messiah lives with him. Greg and I can relate more recently to that. He said it has its challenges and keeps me on my toes. Does it ever. <laughs> the understatement of the year, that's for sure. It's Calvin Tyler. That's probably why Tompkins so dang quick. That's right. You got to chase that two-year-old around. Messiah running around all over the place. My goodness, you watch him. And Tompkins is going to have a very bright future. I think he plays on Sundays, no doubt about it. Obviously, he's not going to check the measurable boxes, but I don't care. He's a receiver that is a quarterback's best friend because of how sudden he is. He's so fast. It reminds me of a mix between two guys that I just love. Andrew Hawkins. Mm who played and had a great career in Cleveland and Cincinnati and has bounced around now in the media. Little undersized, had a great career in Canada prior to coming down to the league. But he was an elite, elite slot receiver. And I also think T.Y. Hilton. Now, T.Y.'s a little bit bigger than Tompkins. But T.Y., we played him. He was at FIU, and he single-handedly destroyed us. I was at Alabama. <laughs> he destroyed us. I remember thinking to myself, this dude is different. And I kind of get that vibe from Tompkins. He's got that quickness. He's got that ability to separate quarterbacks with where the game's going. You love having a guy like this that can create with the ball in his hands. Just an amazing playmaker. Six catches, 115 yards, touchdown. Tyler is bottled up by Shad. Flag is down. By the way, you can check out the ESPN app for the Capital One post game show immediately following the game. The ESPN app is where you can see Jimmy Kimmel hand out that huge championship belt. I thought Kimmel's arms were going to get tired just holding down to that thing. After the play was over, personal foul, defense number five, for throwing a punch. Number five is ejected from the ball game. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run includes an automatic first down. And that's the starting corner, Alex Austin, who is ejected from the game. They came in really late. It was, you could see the frustration. I mean, it's been a frustrating night for Oregon State all the way around. But they have, on multiple occasions, they have let that frustration boil over, and it's led to extra opportunities for Utah State. Oh, well, he threw the punch with the right hand. That's 12 penalties now and an ejection for Oregon State. I mean, you just got to be careful, man. I mean, I understand it's frustrating. I get it. Young player, though. He's a redshirt freshman. Got a very bright future. Great length. He's done a good job. Just got to learn from those mistakes. Well, God gives to Tyler again. They've been feeding it here down the stretch. Just over four minutes to go, and Jonathan Smith on one sideline in his fourth season, and then his first year at Utah State, Blake Anderson, who Greg, of course, had all the success at Arkansas State. 
and well documented and what his family went through as he lost his wife Wendy to cancer she had battled an aggressive form of breast cancer she passed away at only 49 years old and and Blake was very honest with himself of saying that he needed a fresh start he said there were too many reminders of the pain and suffering there at Arkansas State with the loss of Wendy so he comes out to Utah State just moves in a new direction in life and here he is with a conference championship with one of the great turnarounds in the year of college football now potentially four minutes away from winning a bowl game against a Pac-12 school yeah, just amazing and obviously just a heartbreaking story that all of us that have covered college football the last few years were very familiar with and I think it talked to anybody I've never met someone that said anything negative about Blake Anderson. I mean, he is a first-class individual that had to deal with an unbelievable tragedy. And he now gets his fresh start at Utah State, walks into a program that was really kind of at a crossroads. Players were against the administration, the administration. A lot of players saying they were out of there and with the freedom of transfer, you were concerned that things could unravel quickly. They bring in the right man for the job and look at what he's built in such a short period of time. That was a roster reconstruct. 16 transfers, 44 new players. They were one and five last year. And Greg, you spoke to what happened, all the turmoil at the end of the year, a player boycott of the final game. The team was one and five. One and five. And they go from that to being a 10-win team. I don't care what level of football you play. A 10-win season is hard to do. Yeah, very. 11 wins even harder, and they're just a couple that's minutes away from right. that. But I think getting the buy-in, and we've seen it other places too. I mean, the transfer portal has changed things. You can get better faster. Right. Michigan State's experienced that. You've seen it other places as well. And you saw it right here at Utah State, a place that has committed to football the last 15 years. They were one of the worst programs in all of FBS 15 years ago and the commitment that's been made. But what makes it really special is they've identified amazing coaches. Blake Anderson's the next in line. There have been Matt Wells, guys have been there for some time. Sometimes it's worked, sometimes it hasn't. It hasn't. But this is a program that is committed and is a program that expects to win. And he's just the perfect guy to step into this spot and take this program to heights that it's probably never seen before. It's a second and goal. And it's tough running from Calvin Tyler. Brings it down to the three yard line. It would certainly be poetic. For Calvin Tyler, the former Oregon State Beaver, who didn't get much opportunity while in Corvallis. It'd be poetic for him to put a bow on this thing by scoring another touchdown. In his time playing for Oregon State, he was there for four years, he had 30 carries. 30 carries in his entire time in Oregon State. He has 25 carries tonight, 119 yards and a touchdown run. To the end zone and too far beyond as the flag comes in for Terrell. Amazing night for Cooper Laga. Prior to the pass being thrown, holding defense number two. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. One of those nights for Jonathan Smith and the Beavs. Greg, how about the fact of Pac-12 versus Mountain West in bowl games? Mountain West is about to go to 14 and 12 all time. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, so impressive. And of course, the Mountain West champions flexing here against what I think is a very good, very underrated Oregon State team. I know seven and five, but they had really impressive moments at times throughout the course of the season. It's been a great year for them. Nothing to take away from, but this has been Utah State's night, and they're showing it now. Ball came loose at the end there, and Lagarde goes to jump on it. 
And we'll see what they rule here. There's a scuffle for the ball. Oregon State's claiming they have it. And they do. So Tyler was trying to cross the goal line. Ball gets knocked out. I believe it was Omar Spates, the linebacker, who was able to recover that. Recovered in the end zone by the defense. I ruled that's a touchback. The ball replaced in the 20 yard line. How about the hit, too? Oregon State. As you can see, big number three, Jaden Grant, coming up and securing the goal line. And it looked like Laga was going to be able to hop on top of it. It looks like also he just got out muscled for the football. I mean, it's a good effort by the quarterback, just whatever it takes, but you can see because us quarterbacks, I mean, we, we, we'd like to say that we're as strong as anybody on the team, spend as much time in the weight room. It's just not reality. Linebacker's probably going to win that tug of war every day of the week. It's nothing to be ashamed of if you're Lega. If anything, I just got a whole heck of a lot of respect for him for diving on a ball in the end zone under serious duress. Incomplete that time. There's no one was downfield for Harrison. Capital One player of the game goes to the defensive side. Nick Henninger, three sacks. Yeah, he's been ridiculous. I mean, he's taken over the game. I mean, yes, Oregon State had a beautiful first drive. Three plays right down the field for a touchdown. Since then, six points. And it's been because Henninger and company along the line of scrimmage has constantly been applying pressure. Five tackles for loss. Five. This is an Oregon State team that had given up just 40 this year coming into this game. Henninger by himself takes that total well above that 40 mark up to 45 just by himself. And then three sacks on top of it. He's taking over the game. And I folks, think. you're sitting back saying, like, well, what does that mean, 40 tackles? That's the second fewest given up in the nation. Right. Second fewest. The only team that's given up less tackles for loss in Michigan. They have 27, which is just a ridiculous number. Over the course of a 12-game season, to have only 40 tackles for loss, three plus a game, it's crazy. Now that Michigan offensive line is about to get the ultimate test facing that front seven of the Georgia Bulldogs. And there is an interception by Hunter Reynolds that'll close out this game. The well-traveled high academic, originally from New Jersey, who played at the famed Don Bosco and then went to prep school to play for Coach Spinato at Choate Rosemary Hall, then went to Michigan. He transfers here for this year of football and ends up emerging as a star in the secondary, and that's how they will close things out, a Hunter Reynolds interception. And a great job, just a Hail Mary type of throw there from Chance Nolan. Just couldn't get anything on it. An appropriate way to end it. This defense has been so good all night long. Has made life so difficult for Chance Nolan. Has done such a great job of keeping B.J. Baylor, who, remind you, is a guy that comes in as the leading rusher in the Pac-12. Holding him to just four yards of carry is pretty dang impressive. So you got to give so much credit to this defense and making that life very difficult for Chance Nolan to compete throughout the course of the game. Isn't this something? The team that was picked to finish fifth in their own division. That team went on to win the whole conference. And now... They're in the victory formation for their 11th win of the season, Utah State. And they do so on a night when they lose their star quarterback early on. That's what football offers. That's what teamwork <laughs> is, right? When their backup quarterback was questionable to play, didn't play. So the guy who was number three, Cooper Laga, and yes, I know we pronounced the name earlier a different way, but it's Cooper Laga who had never thrown a pass now they can celebrate. His first pass was a 62-yard touchdown. He guided them to victory. And Cooper Laga takes a knee, and Blake Anderson will have a lot to smile about. 
What a performance. I mean, just fitting here in Los Angeles, California, a place where Hollywood dreams come to life. We just saw a third string quarterback lead Utah State over a favored Oregon State team and did so in dominant fashion. Just so impressive with a third string quarterback to not skip a beat. Just an amazing performance all around for the Aggies. A lot of fun with Jimmy Kimmel all night. But on the field, it was a highly competitive game. And the Utah State team just wanted it, didn't they? They played great defense. They turned to seldom used players. And good for Blake Anderson. He wanted a fresh change. He wanted to build something from the start. And Cooper Oga, the young man who spent the years the number three, he's on the shoulders of his teammates now. The unexpected movie script right there. Laura. We're watching Cooper Lagat lifted on the shoulders of his teammates, coach, and you can't wipe the smile off your face. What can you say about the team effort to get this win today? Uh, it's been all season. I mean, coming off one and five, and nobody giving these guys a chance. They just keep working, and this is just a story of us. Third string quarterback come in and play lights out to get the win. That's what this group's about. Just love each other, support each other. Uh, just a great culture and environment. Could not be more proud. You built this team from basically nothing. You had 44 new players, and you needed buy-in from guys that didn't trust the former staff. What can you say about what allowed you to do that? I just really blessed me. That's why God put me in the right spot at the right time with a great group of kids. And guys like Nick Henninger and Marcus Moore and Cam and, and Fred Coop and guys like that bought in and brought a bunch of new folks in and, and, and really just became a family. So, I mean, I'm just, to be honest, I'm living a dream. Blessed and love, a group, love this group of dudes. Let's get Cooper in here right now. Coach, don't go anywhere. Cooper, so you come in, your first ever pass is a touchdown, and your coach shared with us that you actually checked out of the play call because you didn't like what you saw. Walk us through what happened there. Um, I mean, I just went out there. I, I practiced all year long just like everybody else, so I've been knowing what to look for all year. Went out, they gave us the look to check in, so I just did what I've been practicing. It worked out. Yeah, it did. What can you say about the guys around you tonight to give you the confidence to come in as previously a third string quarterback and get this win over a team that was a highly competitive team? Um, I mean, all the guys believed in me. All of them were telling me, you got this, you got this. I've had their back, they've had my back all year. I wasn't worried. I heard the mustache is new. Is that good luck? Um, I mean, not a lot of guys pulled through with the mustache, only a couple of us, but it was supposed to be everyone had it for the bowl game. It's not my normal look, but I like how I look right now. Yeah, I think it worked out well for you. Guys, apparently the secret sauce here is just grow a stash, get a little lip sweater, and you're in a good spot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that lip sweater, as Laura says, sure worked out and looks fine tonight with Cooper, huh? I love what he said there. And, and a great lesson for everybody, all the kids out there. Maybe you don't play. Maybe you're the third string. Hey, I practice just like everybody else all year long, Greg. Yeah, and you're going to get a chance. It's what you do with that chance when it's presented to you. And how about the job done by Cooper Lega, leading his team to their 11th win of the year. Coach Blake Anderson said the story of us love each other. They did, and they're loving this. 24 to 13, they win the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. For Greg McElroy and Laura Rutledge, I'm Joe Tessitore, thanking you so much for joining us tonight as we say goodnight from Los Angeles.
Welcome here to SoFi Stadium in the ESPN app post game presented by Capital One. Joe Tessitore, Greg McElroy, Laura Rutledge with you as Utah State has just won the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl here at SoFi. 24 to 13. Listen, teams don't stay the same. You get better, you get worse. This is a Utah State team that got better as the season went on, nearly peaked in the championship game, and then did this performance against the Pac-12 team. Yeah, to do this as an encore to what they did against San Diego State is remarkable. I mean, a lot of people thought that was their big hurrah, and obviously they had a lot more left in the tank. And they were really headlined the night by guys that you didn't expect to be That's at the right. forefront. I mean, yes, Devin Tompkins did a lot of beautiful things. It was amazing. We expected him to be. But did you have Cooper Lagab being a huge factor? Did you have Henniger winning the MVP? I certainly didn't. So it <laughs> just tells you how impressive this team is, more so than any one individual. That leads us to our Capital One rewarding performance, speaking of those names, Greg. Yeah, and let's take a peek because it was so impressive. Let's start with Henniger, who literally took over the game. I mean, the left tackle, poor guy, had no chance. But it wasn't just him. I mean, the tight end struggled with them. It got to the point where Oregon State had to completely change their offensive plan by keeping tight ends and running backs over there to account for him to help that tackle out. Totally took over the game, three sacks, five tackles for loss against an amazing offensive line. And then Cooper Lega steps right in. This is his first play from scrimmage, his first career pass attempt. That's right, that was it. Made a check, made an unbelievable throw, did so throughout the course of the game. Didn't have to be super spectacular, just had to do what his responsibility was within the offense. He executed beautifully, played very smart, and led his team to a very impressive victory against a quality Oregon State football team. Festivities down the field about to begin, but first we pause quickly for this message. Some things can't be tried at home. Where next? With Capital One, the possibilities are unlimited. Introducing Venture X, our new class of travel card. Earn 10X miles on hotels and 5X miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel, plus receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges. Find your where next with Venture X. What's in your wallet? Jimmy Kimmel has hardware to pass out. Let's go to our public address announcer for the start of our ceremony. LA Bowl fans! We made history together. What a game we had here tonight at the first ever Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. But now it's the moment you've been waiting for. And it's time for the post game awards. So without further ado, Let's send it down to the field with ESPN's Laura Rutledge, standing by with the CEO and Chairman of the Board of Stiefel, Ron Krusheski, Managing Director of Hollywood Park and Executive Director of the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl, presented by Stiefel, Jason Gannon. And from the Jimmy Kimmel Live Show, Jimmy Kimmel. Laura, take it away. Thank you so much, Louie. Uh, first of all, we also have Guillermo up here, okay? Everybody give him a big round of applause, too. We didn't, we didn't announce him. And Guillermo! There we go! Thank you. What a night it was here at SoFi Stadium. First of all, want to congratulate the Oregon State Beavers on a great season. Congratulations to them. Congratulations to the winners of the inaugural Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. That would be the Utah State Aggies. Let them hear it. Jimmy, first of all, what'd you think of tonight? It was such a great night and what a great story. I mean, this kid Cooper Lega comes in. He's never, not only had never taken a snap, he'd never played the game of football before. It's his first time ever playing, and he's so unbelievable. And Coach Anderson with the trick plays, I love that stuff. You guys, I, this was the most exciting bowl game named after me ever. 100%. You guys want to hand out some more hardware here? You guys ready? Let's start with tonight's defensive MVP. This guy with three sacks on the night completely wrecked havoc on this game. Nick Henninger, defensive end, get over here. Congratulations. Get Nick first. Nick.
Nick, you were able to disrupt all night long. What allowed you to do it? Uh, my teammates, the play calling, put us in the right uh, in the right plays. Super proud of this team. Super proud of our coach. He's the man. There's been a lot of adversity this team has gone through on and off the field. And this man led us through it all the way. He's a godly man. And he led this team to a championship. Super proud of him. Aggie Nation, we got a great one. Congratulations, Nick. You guys ready for the offensive MVP of the game? Put your hands together for Devin Tompkins, wide receiver. Devin, you decided to stay at Utah State when Coach Anderson got there and you heard what they were all about. Now, as you look at this season, 11 wins, the turnaround you guys have pulled off, how do you feel? Great, I mean, I got a, I got a great team. I got a great coaching staff. I got a great, you know, fan base. I love Utah State, man. And go Aggies for life, man! Congratulations, and I think the belt we've all and may I say, don't ever cover those abs with that belt. It would be a, a tragedy. Should we see if Coach has abs or uh, anyway? All right, congratulations to Coach Anderson, the championship belt here of the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. <laughs> Coach, you hear your players talking about you. You hear the cheers. What can you say about the support you've gotten here? Overwhelmed, beyond blessed. A uh, great group of dudes that uh, just basically overcame every odd and, and just rose above it, pulled together. You look across, it's diverse. It's from all over the country. We brought some in, some dudes stayed, pulled together. It's one of the best families I've ever been a part of. Love every single one of them. Appreciate them. Those guys, John Hartwell and his staff, my family, and an unbelievable, unbelievable Aggie Nation is one of a kind. Congratulations to Coach Anderson. Jimmy, I'll give you the final word. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, it's the reverb's killing us. Final word. Final word is uh, uh, congratulations to all these. Uh, nothing makes you feel older than seeing these players. And then, well, the one thing that makes you feel older is meeting the coaches, and then they're also younger than you. But they're so much fun, and uh, it's so exciting to be a part of this. And I pity all the countries of the world that don't have college football because it's one of the things that really makes America great. Let's hear it for college football and one more time for the Utah State Aggies. Congratulations, guys. Thanks to everybody for tuning in to the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl and enjoy the rest of bowl season. LA Bowl fans, we want to thank you for your attendance at the inaugural Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl presented by Stiefel. We hope you had a great time. Please drive home safely and have a very happy holiday. For the entire LA Bowl and SoFi Stadium family, this is public address announcer Louis G. We'll see you next year.